It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee is back. He's had some briefings from Apple, has lots to tell us about AirTags, about the new iPad Pro, and about the purple iPhone. Alex Lindsay and uh, Andy Anako are also here. We'll also uh, talk about iOS 14.5. It just came out. The controversy is raging over the ad protections. I think you're going to want it. Lots more to come. Mac Break Weekly is next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 763, recorded Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. Is the purple faster? Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Casper. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow. Let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more at casper.com slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. Offer excludes the snow mattresses. See casper.com for more details. And by Audible. Audible's the leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app. And get started with a free trial at audible.com slash MacBreak or text MacBreak to 500-500. And by CashFly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with CashFly CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show we cover the latest Appful news. Renee Ritchie is here. He wasn't here last week. He was getting briefed by somebody about something. Hello, Renee. We all watched the event together, Leo. They broadcast that to the entire internet. Yeah, we all we all saw. No it. spoilers. Although I yeah. got some. Spoilers. If you didn't watch by now, if you didn't watch by now, you're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna spoil the hell out of it. I got yeah. some spoilers on Sunday from you because you joined us on Twitter, yes. which was great. Thank you for doing that. And we Thank spent a you. lot of time talking about Apple, but iOS 4.5 hadn't come, 14.5 hadn't come out yet, so we have something to talk about today as well. Andy Anako is also here, WGBH Boston. Hello. Everybody's hey there, 720p. Hey I feel like you're right here with me today. I love that. <laughs> only, only, I'm only, I'm only moving at 30 frames per second. Yeah. But the, in real life, I, in real life, I'm, I'm low energy, but I can go at least 60. <laughs> How? What is the frame rate of real life? After all, really, somewhere around four hundred, I think. Oh, really? Right, that, that, Somebody figured that a, out. I, I actually had to look it up uh, about a couple months ago, and the theory is that if you get close to four hundred, the brain is not going to be able to tell between frame rate and real life. That's how that makes sense. That's how fast you got to go. Yeah, it's that same thing of well, what yeah. is what is a retina display? It's a display you can't right. see the dots. So what is that? Yeah, that makes sense. Also with us, Alex Lindsay from the Office Hours show and zero hello, hello. zero dot media. Hello, Alex. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks to uh, Alex, we are able to get our Skype or I'm sorry, our Zoom representative uh, to upgrade us to 720p. Now he says the next step is what I've got: 1080p. <laughs> but so then P's. that's where it's all so at. Many P's. Then we realized. Leo's on a 1080i camera, which means effectively I'm 540. So you all look better than I do. Doesn't seem right somehow. Hey, I all think you, just, you you always want to turn it all the way up as far as it goes. That's all. That's all. <laughs> You're gonna get some. He's gonna get some reds. Just some red <laughs> weapon monstro sensors in there. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh goodness gracious! 14.5 came out yesterday. A great. Excitement was heard throughout the land. For it's a jolly good update for it's a jolly good update. Everywhere except in the halls of Facebook, this is the one they were worried about. So <laughs> what, ha burned. what happened, at least from ad tracking, what happened in 14.5? Oh, they, well, they invented this thing called inf Inform and Consent. <laughs> where it, now you can't just willy-nilly stalk people in digital space the same way you can't willy-nilly stalk us in physical space. You have to say, would you like us? Is it okay if we follow you around the interweb? We'll give you these benefits. We'll tell you all the benefits we'll give you, but you have to press that little button to say it's okay. 
The, um, and Facebook the, is upset uh, because they think people won't press it. Right. Yeah, because, well, and, and this is like one of those things that Facebook should have just let go because this is, this is the place where, you know, you don't want to see how the sausage gets made. And the more they talk about it and the more that they fight it, the more they're opening up, this is all the stuff in your sausage. And this is what this looks like. And, and I think that it could single-handedly them going into this and pulling this open could destroy adver advertising on the web as we know it because people are going to get super sensitive when they realize how deep this has gone you know and 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 so the thing is, is most of us have been happy not knowing exactly how much we're being tracked and the, and and as they keep on picking at this and pulling it out you know, I think that they should—they should have just left this alone. <laughs> you know, what this is going to be. Well, Google didn't think, say anything, uh, and they just quietly. Yeah, Google was like, "We're not." Yeah, cohorts. yeah, Google was like, "We're not saying anything about this. We don't want anyone being thinking about this. We're fine. We're fine." You no, know. I. I I, I think that's I think it's because they're also in the phone business and they also are the phone operating system business and they know that if the public is turning this way then they have to turn this way that's as true. well. That's and true. That's and the, a good and point. thirdly Facebook Facebook made the absolutely the worst response to this. The the right way to do this is to say nothing and then when mm -hmm. people start complaining about oh well how come like Facebook doesn't doesn't work anymore it's only giving me like straight news or whatever they say that oh I'm sorry well app uh, did you oh you must have updated a 14 Point five. Okay, Apple hasn't introduced some stuff that makes things not work on Facebook anymore. But if you go here and turn this off or turn this on, it'll work again. Because I think most people think. Uh, remember the time when uh, ever suddenly every single website starts as having a pop up or a little bar saying, "Here's what we're doing with cookies," and you have to accept. And nobody even reads that anymore. They just simply say, "Oh, if I if I click this button, I get to read this thing that I want to read. Great, I'll click this button." With Facebook, uh, if you do, if you want to see cute new videos of your of your aunt's cat or your nie or your niece's uh, new uh, new kid you're going to click that button so facebook by trying to say we're we're defending the world we're defending all of small business <laughs> against apple's tyranny everybody smells that as bs if all they did was say that oh are the, the the service that you know and love is not working anymore because of something apple did just click this button and your problems will go away that's how you do it. That's how you be evil. It's kind of a, a version of the Streisand effect, isn't it? You make enough noise, everybody pays attention, and maybe that didn't look so good <laughs> in the long run. <laughs> uh, Joanna Stern said, here comes Papa Palooza, pop up Palooza, <laughs> but I haven't seen any pop ups yet. Uh, why not? Am I gonna? Are you up? Hmm. Are you updated? Yeah. So, so you're Some seeing them every time you watch them yet. Every time you launch an app, you're seeing them? If, if the app well, was I, doing the tracking. I deleted right? most of those apps a while ago. Maybe that's yeah. why. I don't have Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp on my phone. You could install it just for the giggles, just to say, just to die at one so, time and then delete it. And then there's another question. <laughs> and let me show you, uh, if I go into the privacy uh, settings on my iPhone, now that I'm in 14.5, uh, there's a tracking section. And there's a button yes. that says, allow apps to request to track. So you can choose your default state. You can have it set to nothing can track and then go in and individually turn on the ones that you think it's okay if they track you. Or you can have it set to everything can track and then you'll get that pop up or you can go through and individually select the ones you don't want to track you. So, okay. So, and then... That's the general, yeah, the general setting. So if I turn, <laughs> it's a little confusing. <laughs> if I turn allow apps to request to track, it's not the same yep. as turning off tracking. It's just turning they, off well, it, the pop-up. Effectively, it is. They they can't ask you any. Well, it, it it means they can't they can't track you and they can't ask to track you. Ah, so this is if you don't like tracking, turn that off. Yes. And then, do you want to ask apps you previously allowed to track? Ah, here's the setting I didn't see. Yeah. If do you want to ask apps you previously said okay? you can track to stop tracking and then you can choose to allow them to continue or just say, no, stop. By the way, I know it's, it's very polite. It says ask apps to stop. Yeah. Is yes. that because it's not enforced? It, it's, it's both. So they can enforce it for the, the on device ad identifying token. So the IDFA Apple controls that they can enforce it. But a lot of companies like Google and face tech, uh, Facebook have their own technology, like their own uh, cookie systems, their own identifier systems that don't run through iOS. They run so all this does is turn apps. off IDFA, the Apple ID for it. Yeah. And Apple Texas. asks that they, that they honor your choice. Um, and that yeah. it's a matter of policy that they honor your choice, but right. we'll see what the real world. So there is a are. thing in your browser are called do not track and the experience we have had now is you can turn it on but nothing will, nothing will change <laughs> right. it is not honored because yeah. it's an honor I, system 
And then they said, no, I'm not going to honor it. And, there, and there's no honor among thieves. This, this is why it's a much bigger problem than what even Apple, and I, I think Apple's doing wonderful work here. They, they really are doing uh, yeoman's work on behalf of the user. Uh, I, I, what I, the thing I hope doesn't happen is that people don't think, oh, well, great, I just turned off this, uh, this really great feature that Apple built for me, and now I'm safe on the internet. And well, no, because it's, and it's, it's not just Google and Facebook. The real evildoers are the ones that are smart enough not to like put their heads above water. There are these, tra the, the advertising and and uh, tra tracking companies and data collation companies that will do anything and everything to identify and earmark your device so that it can attach uh, your specific ID to anonymized data. That's the real risk to privacy and security, in my opinion. This is a great step forward. I just don't want people to think that, oh, just because I've deactivated this, I've, I've suddenly, ha, 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 nobody, I'm invisible. I'm as stealthy as the shadow himself. Well, no, it's, it's one step and part of a balanced breakfast about your own privacy and security. Well, and I think that also Apple is boiling this frog slowly you know so this is <laughs> not this is not the end of how this how this turns out it's i think just apple the is beginning. they're just slowly tightening these things fighting a little fight with facebook then they'll keep tightening apple has no they have no uh need to support advertising they have no need to help them and so and nobody really likes them and so the, the issue is, is they're kind of in a place where they can keep on pushing down this path as long as they don't do it too suddenly and and they're going to be able to wipe out lots of data you know on the way there with location services with those other things and taking on ads are easy because no one wants to see them there's a well, lot i disagree Go ahead. Uh, oh, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll make, I'll make this quick. Uh, I, I really like your analogy to, to the boiling the frog analogy because I think that they're going to keep increasing the heat up until the point at which it starts to hurt Apple. Because I do think there's a point at which all these companies say, well, look, there's a, there's a reason why Google Maps is free. There's a reason why Twitter is free. That's because we make money from ads. We're not charging people five bucks a month to use this. If at some point, I, I think that Apple is making it important for them to update their thinking to think that no that this is no longer the wild west anymore you can't just simply take any uh, data that you want under any circumstances without telling the user however if apple makes it so difficult for them to create a pro create a, a profitable business that uh, supports the iphone they're just going to simply make it so hard to use uh, for for these users uh, unless they turn off the features that are inconvenience or in incompatible with their model that now this again this becomes oh well apple makes it such a pain in the butt to do anything Thing that we want to do with these devices that, you know what, I'm just going to turn off these features entirely, or I'm going to switch to another platform that uh, doesn't keep hassling me each and every time I want to share a photo with somebody. I don't. Th I think the hassling for photos is, is, is one thing, but I think that obviously it's a pretty good model if you were in a subscription business to uh, defeat advertising. Well, that's again. How many? How many of these? How many of the services that that people really use are based on a subscription model? It's not all. It's not all uh, Netflix. It's not all Hulu. Uh, it's often again the 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 Google Doc Suite, the the Work Suite, is became such an important part of uh, of the ecosystem of the internet. Google Mail became such an important part of the ecosystem of the internet because it means that you don't have to pay five bucks, ten bucks a month to get access to mail. The, you go. Once again, the 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 thing that I always that always comes to my mind is every time I go and work in the library and I see people working at uh, at computers in the library, they're not using subscription services. If they had their own internet service, if they could afford their own broad their own computers, they wouldn't be using PCs in the oh, library. But, and so they they need to have Gmail, they need to have Google Docs, or else they can't communicate with the outside world. No, and and not always be available. It's just not. It may not be Apple's business model. That's all. I mean, it, it's the 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 thing is, is that there's an enormous number of people or a growing number of people that are buying their way out of ads. You know, they're buying their way out of of that process, and they are sure pretty valuable <laughs> to, to the to the advertising they're, market because they're spending a lot of money. But they're like, you know, like my I almost never see an ad, ever. You know, like right. and, and it's and we it, can, like I that, don't, that, that's our privilege. We can afford to do that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not saying that it should, it should go away all over the world. I'm just saying right. that Apple may choose that that's not their business. You know, like BMW doesn't right. try to get to certain markets. Apple may not try either. Yeah. All, all I'm saying is uh, this is this will be my last. I, I know this this could be another half hour really great conversation. But all I'm saying is that Apple can't can, Apple can't completely lock down their their, their devices uh, against tracking. It's against the technologies that advertisers require in order to keep these services running. There will be a point at which it gets too hot for the frog, and the frog is the user who simply says, J just just like it, just like on the iPad, it's such a pain in the butt it used to be to get a document of your own of your own choosing onto this device that it kind of 
stymied a lot of people's ability to use the iPad as a serious computer. And now right. Apple has sort of weakened that a little bit to make sure that it's not it's still not an open uh, open file system, but it's easier to get stuff on there. There's a there's a line at which you can't cross if you want to continue to attract people in a competitive marketplace. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, the snarky comments between uh, Steve, between uh, Tim and uh, Mark, Leo. (laughs) Yes. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. So Tim and Mark apparently had a meeting. I think it was in New York Times. And Mark asked him, what am I supposed to do? (laughs) What am I supposed to do with all this data that we've been accumulating outside the Facebook app? And Tim said, delete it. Wow. That's that's the right thing to do, right? (laughs) But that didn't really happen. That really happened? Yeah, th- th- yeah, right after the Cambridge Analytica scandal, oh. uh, according to this New York Times story, there was sort they they were, they were at some sort of like billionaires who rule the world conference, and there was some sort of like a just a private like little pe- let's catch up, let's talk about like our businesses, and and Mark was like, and you see, I imagine him with the oh well, gosh, well we're we're two CEOs who respect each other and like each other and are on the same footing. I'll say, well, what what would you do if if, if you're in this situation with Cambridge Analytica? And he said, I would delete all the data. That we have on everybody. Uh, I mean, this is this is the New York cool. Times says Mr. Zuckerberg was stunned. <laughs> Facebook stunned. Stunned. Was gambling. I say, <laughs> said the people who were not authorized to speak publicly. Facebook depends on data about its users to target them with online ads and to make money by urging Facebook to stop gathering that information. Remember, Cook just said, "Don't gather information about people who aren't on using Facebook." Yeah. Yeah. Not that people are using Facebook, just the stuff outside of Facebook. Mr. The, 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 Cook data, was, the data collected by the app itself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mr. Cook was in effect telling Mr. Zuckerberg his business was untenable. He, and then I love this. He ignored Mr. Cook's advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and, and, and remember that, that, that Facebook did. and other... Facebook and other companies are trading data and also acquiring massive amounts of data outside of the app that aren't related to your phone as well. So they're it's the, that's in. what bo- shit bothers me is those shadow so-called shadow dossiers. So because so I don't have a North Facebook account, but they're still gathering information about me. When every time I well, they're not because I block it. But if I didn't block it actively, that they, they'd be gathering information every time I went to a page well, with a like button or a Facebook. But it's, it's not even that. that they're buying. They're buying your your bo- from other sources. Data. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You see, you're, like yeah. like what you Broke buy pages. at Safeway. You know, so they're all the brokers. Google's doing that too, there. by the way. I should then, point out, Google announced no. that they would be able to tell advertisers when a, somebody saw an, a Google ad on a page and then made a purchase. And people said, "Well, how would Google know that?" Well, they're collecting yeah. the credit card information. That's how they. Well, not. That. Not only that, they know where you are. So, so the thing is, is that they if they know where the, who you are, and then they can they can and uh, then they see the credit card connect charge. the account, yeah, and the credit card to the location yeah. to the and and then and then they connect it to everything that you bought at Safeway, and then they have all that information. What's as well. interesting so, is neither Zuckerberg nor Google, it, they're they're kind of tone deaf about this. That this that this surprises them that this would bother anybody. Well, I think that it's, but I, I think that's from a culture of deciding that we're not, that privacy is not something that is even possible anymore. I mean, we've heard people say that for the last younger, decade. The younger that people think that, yeah. Just think you should just give that up and it's not, you know, privacy is not something that, that really is going to maybe be part of the be future. Right. Yeah. And, and it may be, but that's the, but, but that is the, I think the fundamental change, but the difference between the companies that are gathering it all, it's like, well, that's, that's a, a vestige of the past, whereas Apple saying, well, maybe not. <laughs> you know, maybe it's a message <laughs> of the future. So, so I think that there's, but those are two very philosophical differences, and they see it as creating services and providing things to Andy's point to people who can't afford those services, and and also it is valid that if you're a small company and you want to sell things on the internet, there is nowhere that's more efficient than Facebook to get the word out. Uh, well, and not just companies. Just a small number of people that might be interested in what you're doing. Politicians too, and Jeff Jarvis made this, and mm-hmm. I think it was a salient point. If you're, a, you know, a big shot politician, you got the money to buy TV and stuff. But if you're a small politician running for city council, th- right. Facebook is the best way to reach those prospective voters effectively, right. efficiently. Uh, yeah. You know, we uh, we we had uh, Philip Elmer Dewitt on Sunday. Renee was there, and Philip is on the city council of uh, I think it's Greenfield, Massachusetts, a little town in Massachusetts. He said, thanks to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the towns people are fighting with each other that, that that's the other thing that happens is it it but i yeah. you know i think that might just be because now they can hear what the other people say and think well the problem is is that well, it's also that because choices Facebook, that they've made sorry well i was going to say that the, the thing is is that because facebook can target you so carefully they can 
they can stir you up without anybody else That's seeing true. it because they're going to find people that are That's that true. are like minded to that ad and then give them information that they that they tangentially agree with or more likely to believe without anybody else seeing it and arguing with it. They just get this pure feed of, you know, what you think is happening is actually happening. And and that, I think, is also increasing the, the uh, you know, issues uh, further in the uh, New York Times article, it says. Talking about Zuckerberg and Cook, the executives have also jabbed at each other in 2017. This is, I remember when this happened, I was appalled. A, a Washington political firm funded by Facebook and other Apple rival, rivals published anonymous articles criticizing Cook and creating, this is, this is really dirty tricks, creating a false campaign to draft him as a presidential candidate. <laughs> Presumably to upend his relationship with former President Trump, who was famously sensitive to that kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it's that's Roger that, that's, Stone that's level. worthy of a Romulan. That yeah, was a really yeah. good. <laughs> oh boy, Ferengi style. And when Mr. Cook was asked by MSNBC in 2018, I love this one. How he would deal with Facebook's privacy issues if he were in Mr. Zuckerberg's shoes, he replied. I wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> uh, we should also say we should also say Apple and Facebook declined to make Mr. Cook and Mr. Zuckerberg available for interviews and said the men have no personal animosity toward each other. Period. Lovely. Go ahead, Renee. Popeye and Pluto. <laughs> yeah. We have testimony that, like, from these countless Facebook executives now that have said on record that every time they've given Mark Zuckerberg the opportunity to choose slightly less toxic paths, like, yeah. they could reduce the amount of conspiracy theory and extremism by 20% and revenue would go down like 5%. Mm. All those kinds of choices, he has chosen max to maximize revenue and engagement every time. And he's also in a unique position, unlike Google and other companies, where he's not responsible to his board. He set everything up so that he has complete, like, potentate powers over Facebook. And I think that'll be to the detriment of him eventually, because nothing unregulated internally ends up being unregulated oh, externally. We have figured it out. The chat room, thank you very much. We figured it out from Ars Technica. Cable chewing beavers take out town's internet <laughs> in uniquely Canadian outage. So oh, those darn beavers. <laughs> those darn beavers. That's the problem. Tabarnak. Blame the beavers. Tabarnak. They're building a dam with your internet cables. So I have a question, uh, and this was uh, nine to five. Mac said they found this. There are some users for whom this button I just showed the allowed apps allow apps to request a track is grayed out. Yeah, and, and if it is grayed out, it doesn't look like there's any obvious way to ungray out. What I find is with mine, I don't have all the extra features. If I turn that off, I don't see the extra features that you saw. I only get to turn it on and off. Allow. Oh, you don't get that like, oh, oh, you know why I got that? Because I had uh, somehow, without my knowledge, this must have been pre-14.5, given three apps permission to track. Out oh, and it. permission to track outside the app, which of course no one would want. And right. uh, so that was what that pop-up was. You know, these guys are going to get turned off or you want to leave them on. So okay, you didn't get it. that because of that. Right. Um, I have zero as well because I never did that either. Yeah. Apple says... Big blank screen. Apple says that they think it... Or it, you will see that grayed out if uh, there are two possibilities. And I don't think that this covers all the people who have it grayed out. Uh, if you're under the age of 18, it'll be grayed out because it's just on... By def tracking's blocked by default if you're under 18, apparently. Or if your device has an MDM profile that restricts allow apps to request to track settings, the kind of thing your business might have put on your phone uh, to prevent that. But it's but but uh, nine to five says, but the people we're hearing from are not in those situations. So um, don't know why that's happening, but that's maybe a bug, I would guess. Do you want to watch Apple's two minute explanation of all this? Mm. No, <laughs> is that no, a no, no Andy? I, 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 <laughs> I watched. No, I I watched. I, I watched it yesterday, and I thought I thought it was it was a good explainer, but like it's a little bit partisan about the reasons why companies track you. <laughs> so, well, just keep that in mind. When you're using apps on your iPhone, you may start to see this. It's the new app tracking transparency prompt. It's a feature that gives you a choice, a choice on how apps use and share your data. Data like your age, location, health information, you're on the spending toilet. habits, and your browsing <laughs> history, to name a few. This data can help to map your runs, 
tag your photos or track your location so a nearby store can offer discounts. But some apps have trackers embedded in them that are taking more data than they need. Mm -hmm. Sharing it with third parties like That's advertisers true, right? and data brokers. Yeah. They collect thousands of pieces of information about you to create a digital profile that they sell that to looks others. a lot like your fingerprint. These third parties use your profile to target you with ads. And they can also use it to predict and influence your behaviors and decisions. This has been happening without your knowledge or permission. Your information is for sale. You have become the product. That's why iPhone users will now be asked a single, simple question. Allow apps to track you or not? Maybe you're okay giving an app your email Maybe. or location. There's something so wrong. You can share your data with others to yeah. personalize ads or build a profile about you. Why? You would be And like if you're not, well, that's what the prompt is for. Whatever you choose is up to you. <laughs> it is But a little. at Apple, we believe that you should have a choice. App tracking it transparency. It is a little slanted towards. A simple new feature. Why would anyone ever allow an app to track? Careful. <laughs> it's like, hey, if you want to, it's, it's kind of like, what, what you want to. Is that a Lori Gill job? I, oh, it, it just feels like I don't know. Could it be. feels like a? Uh, it feels like you should say at the end, it's like, yeah, do what you want. It's your funeral. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, that's what it feels like. Your that's that's, that's, that's exactly not how your father right. and I raised you. But you're yeah, adults exactly. now. Exactly. We have We'd to let really you make your own mistakes. <laughs> We'd be really disappointed if you go down that path. But I mean, it's your life. You know? What can we say? <laughs> you know, we gave you the chance. Now, there is one thing, and I read this in one place, and and maybe it's bogus, but Apple does still have some advertising, right? Oh, the, is that the Wall Street Journal? That was the worst it's, article. It was probably the journal. And they also have some sort of user segmentation thing that they offer advertisers too, right? Something like Google's Flock where it's anonymized, you know, different. But I believe it's all within the app. It's the, 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 They're not saying you can't track anybody. It's first party. It's first party. First party. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, which they're letting everybody do. Yeah, yeah Facebook doesn't have to ask you if it doesn't, if if you're in the app or no. No. And the vast majority is the app store recommending apps. It's those app store search ads that developers can buy, okay. um, which is not the kind of threat that a lot of the okay. other... The Wall Street Journal article was leave... terrible, though, because it conflated all these things and made it seem like yeah. Apple's doing this dirty trick. And, and Apple delays uh, giving some of the information to third parties from like the news app, and they do that deliberately so they can't get tracking data off of that. And Apple doesn't track, so Apple has access to that data, but it's also Apple's app. It was just... It was a very... Very strangely time strategized and executed article for me. Hmm. I agree. You know, the journal the of thing. late has been so anti big tech. It's starting to show, show through in the, you know, editorially, of course, they hate Google because they feel like Google put them, almost put them out of business. And I'm not sure why they would hate Apple, but they certainly have kind of a little bit of a dog in the advertising tracking hunt. Well, it but it like shouldn't, it shouldn't bleed so into the news fair. operation. That should be independent, yeah. but it seems like it kind of does. They, they they have they have a lot of writers that I really like and respect. So yeah. But then again, I don't. I only get it through Apple News, so I'm not like watching. I'm not reading everything cover to cover. I pay. We've, we've, Joanna Stern is aces. Yeah, no, yeah I love exactly. Joanna. Yeah, in fact, she has an interview yeah. uh, with Apple. With uh, uh, great, it was great so Federico. good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Was it? I didn't see it yet. It was. She goes right after him. It's like, when are you going to be CEO? What's happening with your <laughs> hair? Does Tim call you Hair Force One? <laughs> the things we really care about. He's like, no, oh, not to well. my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so along with 14.5 for iOS and iPad OS, there's Watch OS 7.4. And that that adds the the I think much needed, it will unlock your phone if you've got a face mask on. Yeah. It, it, so yeah, it works with it. It was a, a, a sorry. I, I got kind of excited about this, and I started talking <laughs> before I started thinking, which is something I've got three post-it notes saying, "Please don't do that, Andy." Uh, but yeah, it's it. it I, I've seen I've seen demos of how it works, and it, it's it, it, when when you first start seeing, oh well, you let you, let you uh, unlock your phone with your with your watch. That sounds a lot like what Android has done for a while, where you can have a trusted trusted Bluetooth device right. nearby, which is. Convenient, but it can be a security problem because it's it's very very uh, overtly trustworthy. Whereas this is implemented specifically as a solution to the problem of I want the convenience of face unlock without having to pull down my mask or create a brand new profile, and it works very very well. It's a very good Apple solution. 
In fact, you, it kind of makes you wonder why they didn't do it sooner because you have authenticated, so that watch knows it's you. I mean, it's but only it's hard because you know it's 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 a it's a, a big infosec problem for them because initially they made it so that the iPhone would unlock the Apple Watch, thinking that it was just harder dexterously to use the passcode on the Apple Watch, so make it easy. And whenever you unlock your iPhone, if you're wearing your Apple Watch, it automatically unlocks. And they were really worried that there would be some sort of race condition or you know ah. unforeseen event that would create an exploit between the Apple Watch and the right. iPhone. So they make it incredibly narrow when the conditions work, and they also have a bunch of condi like if if I if it gets unlocked and I walk away from you fast enough, it'll lock again automatically thinking someone's trying to take advantage of it to steal your phone. So it's it's got, in order to maintain both of them unlocking each other, which is not a tenable security situation, really, they had to be very careful in engineering it. I mean, I, I use my Apple Watch to give password permission on, it unlocks my MacBook. Uh, when I need yes. a password, I can have the Apple Watch just say, okay, password, and you double click. But that's one direction as well. It's the two directions that makes it hard. I see. Yeah, I get it. Because yeah. if they can both unlock the other, it's, I don't want right. to say it's a temporal paradox that will yeah. end the universe, but it's a little, it's, it's got to be thought out. It's but it might. it might, it might, it might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're crossing the beams. It's always risky. As usual, it's a it's a it's a challenge to find that balance point between let's make this uh, secure let's make security easy enough to use that everybody will use it because the moment that you make it a little bit inconvenient or start to screw up, people don't think oh well there's this one exception which doesn't work well let's turn off that feature entirely and forgot and forget they've turned it off so it's it's such a I, I think they must get like sociology PhDs on board working at Apple to work on this to figure out how does the human brain kick back against being told to do something they don't want to do even when it's for their own good all you have to do is follow me around the grocery store <laughs> because i've got my watch has my shopping list and i've got my mask on i can't take it off and i have to passcode my watch every five minutes to yep. say what else. and lisa's oh. got 18 apple tags in you <laughs> she has to put them in your oatmeal every morning for the last 18 days oh you want to <laughs> hey by the way you want a really interesting we're going to take a break in a second. I, I have, I want to, we actually have ads today. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break in a second. But I just want to have a weird question that I thought was great uh, on the radio show. It's an Android question, so you'll pardon me for this. But a guy, a guy calls up and says, I have a Moto G7. Nice phone. I recommend it. But every time I walk into an Albertsons or a Vons, it reboots. It goes into a boot loop. And my first thought, well, maybe it's, Something to do with Wi-Fi pairing. Turn off. Turn, put it in radio. Put it in uh, airplane mode. See if that fixes it. But then somebody in the chat room was very smart. And said, "Oh, you know what that is? They're they're using beaconing in these stores. In fact, Simon Malls do the same thing. And there's some sort of weird interaction with the beaconing in that particular phone. There's some bug and it's causing a boot loop. The fix is, and it works all the time. Turn off Bluetooth, and then the beaconing." It just it was the weirdest bug. And I can imagine how frustrating that would be for somebody. It does not happen with an iPhone, so I don't even know why I brought it up. Mm. I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> Obviously. That's, 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 that's anti-advertising. You, you want to steal information from... You, you, you want to be a pickpocket they, so they don't even know when well, they lost their phone. Yeah, that's exactly You don't exactly want to be it. like a, yeah. a mugger. Yeah. And that's what they're mugging them. Renee has a purple iPhone. He has air tags. <laughs> Or unless you already sent him back. No, they're here. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. Because he's actually been using these that. guys. Do, but everybody wants to know. Is the purple faster? Know. That's what we want, all want to know. <laughs> is, is the purple, purple faster? faster? Or I want to know, do you have the Hermes $450 tag? <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't believe that's even shipping yet. Don't scare me, Leah. <laughs> they don't sample those. That's all. That's all. Ms. They don't. They don't. Apple doesn't this, sample the Ms. stuff. You know, Apple does all this great stuff for consumers, but then there's this one little thing like, oh, and for this thirty dollar uh, location tracker, we're going to sell a four hundred fifty dollar. I I didn't. I think I told you. I asked. I'm like, what? What is all this stuff? And the the Ms. Rep very politely, and they were dressed in a way that I still can't oh, yeah. imagine. Like Scarves. it was like something out of yeah. a movie. Yeah. It, it was like uh, angles and yeah. things yeah. and project and. Yeah. <laughs> they just said, like, almost patronizingly, too, they just said, there are people who pay for $25,000 flights, $25,000 hotel rooms, yeah. and $25,000 dresses they wear once. This, for them, is no amount of money, dear. 
<laughs> like, I just feel like it's not a good look for Apple. This is the this is like the twenty five thousand dollar Apple. Watch. They want rich people to buy the stuff. They just want rich people to it buy is, it. They don't care. It, it is part of my burden to have to speak to journalists from time to time. If they were yes. able to make our money, they wouldn't be journalists. I, I they'd, be, they'd be manipulating opinion. Not I don't reporting have a problem with Hermes selling these. Uh, just like I know. there are lots of companies that sell this. Uh, this there's, there's no reason why you couldn't sell an AirTag. Container. I just don't understand why Apple is. I, th I feel like it's, well, a, it's a mistake for Apple to promote it and make a big it's deal. It's niches, about it. like they have the sport and they have the LMS. Yeah. It's just to meet their customers where they are. All right. Yeah, it's 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 fun, but I have to I have to before you go to commercial that yeah over the past week I have I have had the hardest. Uh, maturity battle going through my head because I have two like equal and opposite forces of philosophy saying if you have if people have that kind of money and it break and it makes them happy let people be happy it doesn't affect you whatsoever and on the other side I say oh my god people have seven six hundred dollars to spend on a luggage tag that holds <laughs> what what's with these people I don't like I, I was watching I was there was a video about uh, this a five hundred uh, five hundred million dollar house in LA or uh, Malibu or whatever and they're giving this tour and it really is like a hotel attached to a mall as a private home and I'm like why do you why do you need do you like need a that? kitchen uh, attached to every single room you have a dance club with an 800 for, why do you need a dance club inside your house at least if you do that you have acreage the problem yeah. is that these Hermes tags are just $10 leather tags with the Hermes brand on it there's not they're not magical. It's bl it's just blatant rip off. Well, even like the latest watch bands aren't even leather. They're, they're I keep every time I say this wrong, people get so mad at me. Hermes, <laughs> um, they're fabric. Whoa, they're, they're woven fabric, and they're still like three hundred dollars because only Hermes can weave fabric. You now. are a francophone. You can say Hermes correctly all you want. I'm going to say Hermes just because people it's going to annoy so people that I like annoying. Lisa. But then I say Guomingji correctly and they get so mad. Oh, it's I know. Like, no, it's Mingji. Like, no, no, it's Guomingji. Guomingji. No. Uh, yes. People aren't happy. You're a, 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 a Jungwa Ren. Uh, Jungwa Shua. Jungwa Ren. Yeah. Shua, shua. Um, Lisa and I went into an Hermes store once in Paris. <laughs> we left quickly. Uh, our show today brought to you by... Uh, I was, oh, they have one at the SFO one? gate. I want there to is a watch one, yes. store. I'm there at every flight. Yes. Every thank, thank God you're here. Hey, thank God you're here. One of the one of the toilets in the in the employees' lounge has been running past all day. But please use the rear entrance. Yes. <laughs> I walked into. I walked. I can't. I walked into some ha, some watch store and I said, I need a, a chronograph that can do a digital um, uh, thing that, that you know digital times that is I can set the two of them separately and he goes oh yeah this is the watch you need there's only one in the store this is the watch's Taghar or something like that. I said how much is it and he said $5,000 I was like I'm in the wrong store that was their cheapest <laughs> watch I, a, I guarantee you watch that did you could spend $150,000 on a tag viewer like, so, I'm like I'm, I'm in the wrong store I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna go now I had the pretty woman experience where I walked into coaches and I said, do you have the Apple watch band? And the person looked at me like I was carrying the plague. <laughs> like, the what? We don't have those. Oh. And I held one up on my, on my watch because I had one of the, the early ones. I'm like, yeah, you sell it now. They're like, oh. And then the manager came back later like, oh, I'm so sorry. We have them in this and this. Which ones would you like to get? I was like, oh, we don't that sell, changed quickly. We don't sell Timex bands. Are you Until insane? they saw the prices on those bands. Yeah. <laughs> fancy, fancy Twistoflex bands. <laughs> Twisto I keep aspiring Flex. to own one That's day. right. It will, not, it will not pinch or pull your uh, arm hair. That's the beauty. Um, wow. This has been a real trip down a consumer, <laughs> consumer lane. Rode the Rodeo Drive of my mind. Our show today, oh, we got a new Casper. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know if we have a video of it. I don't think we shot a video of it. Our show today brought to you by Casper. I sleep on a Casper every night. We got a brand new one. It's really nice. I have owned, probably owned all the Casper. See, I collect Casper mattresses. What's great about Casper is everybody in my family also has Casper mattresses. Um, when my daughter moved just the, uh, about two months ago, she said, I don't have a mat, I don't have a bed. I said, no problem. Got the whole set from Casper. Casper's just announced something new, the Casper cooling collection, just in time for summertime. Everything you need is sleep cool at night and all night long. Casper mattresses with the new snow technology 
hyper light sheets, lightweight duvets, and breathable mattress protector are all designed to keep you cool and comfortable so you can't help but love your tomorrow. Actually, we know sleeping cool is critical to a good night's sleep, believe it or not. And I think I fell asleep on my mattress. <laughs> these really do sleep cool. I love our Caspers. That is not feigned pleasure. Casper's Wave Hybrid Snow Mattress keeps you cool. I love the name, the snow mattress. Keeps you cool for 12 plus hours, pulling heat away from your body for sustained temperature regulation, a cool to touch feeling. A better bedding makes for a better tomorrow. That's why Casper's Hyper Light Sheets are designed with an innovative grid weave that lets air flow through for maximum breathability. It's time to dress your bed for summer. Don't forget the lightweight duvet. It provides optimal temperature control without sacrificing plush comfort. Even Sammy loves it, our little kitty cat. Casper's breathable mattress protector improves the coolness of the bed even further by allowing air to flow between your body and your mattress. I, I, I cannot stress this, and I know people think I'm crazy, but Micah knows he's, he's a sleep expert. Sleeping cool is very important. All of these great mattress products designed to work together to prevent overheating all night long because cooler sleep means better sleep. I don't mean cold. I mean, you know how when you turn the pillow over and it's, and it's cool and refreshing like that? Better sleep means better tomorrows. And as always, Casper offers free shipping and free returns. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow. Let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more. I got my, my daughter entire, basically entire bedroom set at casper.com slash MacBreak. You can use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. The code MacBreak gives you 100 bucks off select mattresses. Offer excludes the snow mattresses. See casper.com for more details. By the way, I mentioned new iPad and iOS new watch OS, but there's also a new TV OS. And Renee, I think this turns on the new uh, calibration feature, even on older yep. Apple TVs. If you have, which Apple TVs work with this? I believe it's 4K and 4, 4K, what are we calling it? 4K Mark II? 4K <laughs> Duh? Duh. Yeah, 4K, I have, the new 4K? I have several generations, so I'll go around and, and try it and see. Yeah. yeah. Not the 1080p, the 4K. You need the 4K. I think yes, yeah. I believe. I might be wrong about that, but I, I believe you need the 4K. And what? Uh, how do? Uh, what? How do I get it to start? <laughs> <laughs> so it really depends. Like it, what you get out of it and what it does really depends on the television that you have. You know, properly supporting it. And all it it can't do brightness and contrast, those sorts of things. All it can do is the color accuracy of the display. And it basically uses the sensors in your iPhone to calibrate the Apple TV. So the output from the Apple TV to your TV gives you as accurate colors as possible. Because again, they can't go in there and flip the dials on your TV set for you. So it, it just basically adjusts the signal. Yeah, we were talking TV. with Scott Wilkinson on uh, uh, Saturday on the radio show because I wanted to know what Scott thought. He hasn't tried it yet. But we do know that it can't, for instance, adjust the brightness and contrast. Only that has to go through the TV. Yes. It can, the Apple TV can basically can only uh, correct color. And uh, Scott was of the opinion. He says, that's great. It's nice. But honestly, probably the most important thing you're going to do with a brand new TV is adjust the brightness and contrast because that's... That's set for a store that's going to be vivid and uh, and pop, and it's not natural, and that's well, probably the most I, important thing. The, the thing that I haven't done yet is try, I I did it yesterday, and it was great. <laughs> it was really? Cool. Did you notice the difference? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was definitely the, the colors are definitely more accurate after I did it, and and I'm my TV was pretty well set up, but it definitely looked better when I was done. It didn't make a huge difference because mine else? was already pretty close. I have a. Um, it is a Samsung in the, I'm trying to think which, which LCD because I have Vizio and then yeah, it's LC, LCD. LCD. Yeah. Um, okay. I haven't tried it with our LG. We have an LG at the office that that's pretty high end. I'm going to try that tonight. Tried that one. Yeah. My, my LG yeah, OLED. Same. I want to see, I mean, I yeah. presume it'll work with an OLED cause it's not changing the TV. It's changing right, what the right. Apple TV sends to the TV. Right. So what it does is you, you go into the, you go into your video setting settings and then go down to video audio and video and then go into video and, and it says calibrate. Oh, and nice. when you hit it, it just says, it, your phone comes up and says, do you want to start doing this? You know, if they're on the same network and you say yes. And then, and then it puts up a little place for you to put your phone and you turn your phone around. So the front facing camera is 
is in the uh, is in front of it, and then it, you'll see it start changing colors. So, so cool. it'll go through the primaries, and then it goes through the the uh, the whites, and and so on and so forth, and it, and it kind of scrolls through those, and then it makes this nice little explosion where it goes. Oh, you nice! Know, like, it's like, All done. You know, and I was like, "There's a that, there's a classic Apple surprise and delight." It's just like a, and then we're gonna make a fireworks. You know, like yeah, you're done. You know, and then so so it was. Um, anyway, so the uh, uh, so then it then it finishes, and as soon as it came up, it, it definitely looked like it. I didn't. What I want to do now is set it set the TV really badly. Oh, and then do it again yeah. and see what happens yeah. and, and then see it because it was already pretty close. And so it just, it definitely looked better, but it, I, I, I'm kind of curious how far the error correction can go. So I haven't had time to set that up, but I'm going to be doing that over this week. Cause we're, I thought it was one of the most exciting announcements of the, of the, of, of the whole thing, you, you know, would. that, that it, yes. because it was just, well, this is such a, it's such a problem for people. I mean, even when we, as professionals buy a, you know, a high end L, L OLED, you know, LG, Getting that thing to look correct is like a day. <laughs> like, like the, you oh, know, I, I brought in Scott. It He's it. a THX certified right. calibrator, and he spent right. several hours with special machinery. Exactly, and we, yep. and and the only way to get it really close is to use a LUT, a LUT box that's going to let me, you know, really take control of that. And so the idea that they're taking a lot of that that would normally cost us a thousand or fifteen yeah. hundred dollars of right. hardware to solve that is is pretty amazing, and. Um, and so, you know, for the average person, just will it, people keep on asking me, like, is it going to be 100%? No, it's not going to be 100%, but it's going to be four times better than what you had before. Right. You know, which is, you know, which is going to be great. So uh, Gallifrey Rebel in our IRC says it works with the HD version as well. So does oh, John the nice. Jam. Yeah, that's not what Apple uh, implied, but Ooh. apparently it does. Uh, Gallifrey Rebel said, I have two of them and I was able to color calibrate. My colors look warmer now. They were kind of washed out before, but I didn't know it. So that does and make a difference. One thing that I'm that was on nine to five back, and we just have I because I, I haven't had time to test it on a on a vision display. But they were like, "Oh, it doesn't work with vision because vision already does that." But vision doesn't have a way to sample that color. Oh, so, so I'm not sure. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what really... Wrigley's saying in the chat room. I tried the new Apple calibration, but if you have Dolby Picture Mode on your TV and it's set on Apple as Dolby, it says no need to do this. But you're saying it's not really, it, there's it, no you need. You still don't it have a sample. Can't. Well, I don't know if it can. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Dolby may it's... override whatever mm. you're, you know, that but may the, be well, part Dolby of the Dolby. Dolby is color managed, right? Yeah. So they may, Dolby may say in their license agreement, and by the way, Apple, if you're going to say Dolby, you can't mess with it. Right, right, but the problem is, is that it doesn't know what. I mean, it, theoretically, it does, but but being able to really know what that TV is doing is something that a sensor would be useful for. It uses anyway, the uh, is it use it's using the the face ID uh, sensors, right? So your phone has to have a face yeah. ID in it, or it won't work, right? I think so. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna go home and try it tonight. I'll cut. I have three uh, Apple TVs. Three. By the way, Renee, uh, on Sunday, Philip Elmer DeWitt uh, talked about. We were talking about the new Apple remote, and he said, "Oh, all you really, all you really need to do is buy these little rubber holders <laughs> that makes your yeah. Apple remote usable again." So I, uh, during the show, I bought three of them, and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely right. Let me see if I can find them. They're from that uh, Elago, we, that company we love so much that makes the little uh, rubber iMac that you put your Apple Watch in to charge it. Uh, and they're, oh, he, we, uh, actually, it was, no, it's Dwight Silverman. Sorry. Sorry, Dwight. Yes. Of course. Uh, On.forbes.com. But do they come in purple? Slash Dwight. I want to, <laughs> they, well, I got the ones in black. And Lisa said, the, uh, she said, oh, uh, they're also magnetic. His, his uh, Dwight uh, Dwight Silverman was the guy. He says no. The original Siri remote doesn't suck if you do this. It does solve some of the problems, but not all. They still got that Siri button on the front there where I hit it every time. And there's no mute. Mm -hmm. And there's no TV on switch. I I think that new. I don't know if I love it enough to spend sixty bucks to retrofit my older Apple TVs. That's the difference. Maybe if it had an Hermes holder. <laughs> Five hundred dollars. My son, my games. son just uses his game controller. Like he doesn't even use the the remote. He just picks up his game because he plays right. a lot of Apple and he's TV used to it. games. Yeah, and his thumbs are goes, his thumbs yeah, are overdeveloped. Puzzle. Yeah, it is. I will say that the game controller is a little bigger, but it's a lot faster than the, the remote to get around. Uh, with the release of all of those, 
There's a new Big Sur, 11.3. Uh, it'll show up in your update. If it hasn't already, it will soon. It uh, A variety of new features for the Reminders app, Apple Music, HomePods support, M1 optimizations, AirTags. I realized all of these had to be updated for AirTags. Uh, and there is a malware fix. There's a security fix as well. So um, look for 11.3. Have Have you done it, anybody? Has anybody done it yet? Not me. No, me neither. Yeah. It's, too, it's too bad that they haven't made uh, AirTags compatible with. You can't set up an AirTag with a uh, with a Mac. I know uh, because it's it's got it's got the Find My app. It's got everything else you kind of need. It's kind of a bummer. I understand. I understand why they're making it uh, iPhone. Uh, Is there a technical only, reason? Is it Bluetooth LE or something? Or it's got all the sensors. I think the I think Apple is just still in a state where the Mac lags in in, in several yeah. things for a release or two, yeah. which is mm. it's getting better. It's way better than it used to be, but it's still not day and date for a lot of these services. Because yeah. I hope that if 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 uh, if it were multi platform in any way. Boy, it would be so hard to recommend anything other than the Apple tag. And until a year from now, when Tile and everybody else comes up with the same sort of privacy portfolio and security portfolio that Apple had at day one, that's a really compelling story that they're making. You have to set it up with an iPhone and iPad, but once you set it up, you can use it with everything. Yeah, yeah, that's what it says. It's still fine. My works everywhere, but you can set it up with an iPad. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, didn't know that. Works, it's yeah. iPhone only. So let's talk about the uh, Air Tags. Renee has one. How many do you have? Two. I have five. I have the four pack and the one, but the one shot and the four shots. Of oh, Air Tag. nice, very nice. So did you get did you get them engraved? Uh, no. So these are all demos. These are the ones that Apple sent. And so this is a funny story, and I hope you'll forgive me saying this. Actually, I think he said it already, but one of them says JG on it. I don't know if you can see that. And I think when Gruber got his, he assumed it was for John Gruber, not realizing we all got JG. <laughs> <laughs> what does JG stand for? <laughs> Apple just randomly picked them. There's JG and there's RJT. And I think Apple's just showing off that you oh, can have them engraved. But I get just, it. Either or someone at Apple has a, or Jaws has a really good sense of humor. I don't know. Either way, Do we, we. I think it's John Gruber's world. We just live in it. I think it's yeah, it exactly. is, Jay, it is it, These are all John Grubers. But think who they, is R J T? I him. think Robert J Troutheimer. Who is R J? I don't know. I was. It's all. It's all Robert Downey Jr. to me. Robert Juni right. Downer. Johnny, Johnny. Uh, ring joint type. Rubicon Japan Trust. People were hoping it was R T J, but Apple's not that hip. <laughs> What's R T J? Uh, roll the, roll the, roll the something. The, apparently, yeah, the illicit substance. Oh, <laughs> I'm not that hip either. I don't know what we're allowed to say on the air. I don't. I, I, now I don't. Silence. We're, we're we're all like Renee's the only one who understands what he's talking about. Roll, roll, roll the juice box before roll the joint. The recycling. Roll the Picked joint. The you can say joint on the yeah. show. Okay. Marijuana right. is legal in California. I I could be I could be spoken a spleef right now. I don't want overcast to demonetize us. <laughs> <laughs> Is Marco that sensitive to the whole thing? I don't know. <laughs> I will not have anyone smoking marijuana wacky well, weed on my podcatcher. In my app. <laughs> <laughs> not in my app. Uh no, we're just teasing you, Marco. We know you don't care. Yes. Uh don't demonetize us. <laughs> um, anything else to say about uh, air tags? They, they tell us about the setup. Was it just as easy as it looks? Because yeah, that was, it's, it, that it was really, the negative. That was really the negative on uh, uh, like trackers and tiles. Is it's Bluetooth is ugly. Setting up Bluetooth is just not yeah, fun. Yeah, so it's gonna pop. I mean, like you just you literally just bring the tile close and it pops up with just like you know, AirPods, with this little thing, yeah. just like your AirPods. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it has one extra step, and that is it tells you very firmly that the serial number for this tag is now linked with your Apple ID. So use them responsibly because if anything bad happens, there may be warrants issued and people trying to. That's you know, really find good who you are. because that's that. And, and as we talked about on Sunday, that's that anti-stalker functionality. Yeah. And uh, none of these other Bluetooth trackers even consider that, you know. Now, I don't, can you I really can well balance though? Because you have to like, so it has this idea of significant locations. So you can put a tile on, like, for example, I could drop a tile on Andy, 
And I, I could see that Andy's taking the bus. Andy's going to the, like, but as soon as Andy gets to the library, that's a significant location for Andy. Andy goes to the library all the time. So then Andy's going to get a little thing on his iPhone, or if he taps it with his Android phone over NFC, he'll get a little pop-up saying, this is an AirTag. It's not registered to you. Here's how you can take it apart if you want to. So if Andy stole my AirTag, I have until he gets home or to that library to try to track him down. But once he gets there, he's notified and it will start chirping if he doesn't, you know, pay attention to notifications for long enough just to make absolutely sure. So my thing is, it's not like a Spider-Man or Batman tracker. It's like a Mark a Mark Rober glitter bomb where the person will know <laughs> what it is and hopefully just throw it away and then you'll be able to go and recover well, so it. So if you wanted to put this in, in something like your, like your kid's backpack, just so you know where they are, you know, when, you, you know, when you're trying to meet them or, or something like that, is that something you can do with it? Isn't it going to beep? It's going to beep. Well, That's what I'm trying to it, figure out. If they, do, if they have an iPhone, it'll pop up on their iPhone and they can say ignore this notification now, what if they don't have and then an it'll be fine. I guess it'll, it'll if just If they don't have an iPhone, it. after three days, it, it'll, it, well, it depends because it can't track their significant locations either. So yeah. um, there's a whole bunch of different conditions that it has to, you're sort of at war with, but it would probably beep after like three days at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, they, I I think, think you could maybe to, set that too. Sorry. I think Apple said to somebody else, uh, I can't remember which article I read, that it's not uh, it's not engine it's not really targeted towards tracking mammals <laughs> like uh, like yes, human beings yes. like your kids <laughs> or, or your pets. dogs. So yeah, so yeah. that it's more for ta for for static objects. So it would it would be a non optimal use of the technology for many reasons. Right. Get them a cheap iPhone SE and put that in their jacket. <laughs> exactly. Hey, <laughs> congratulations! You know you've been so good about you haven't you haven't stayed up late without calling in for for almost a month now. So we bought you a brand new <laughs> iPhone that runs at fourteen point five and a battery charger, so the battery will never run down while you're out of our sight. <laughs> Nothing suspicious well, about that at all. We just decided. I bought four. I thought this looks like. I mean, I used uh, other trackers. I have a tile right now on there, but I, the, I just the ba batteries die and stuff. I just feel like Apple's going to do it right, and that's probably why Tile is terrified. <laughs> uh, well, the tile. I have a tile on on one of my key sets, and it just feels very clunky looking at the yeah. Apple ones. You're like, mm, uh -huh. that doesn't look very nice. Well, and they also don't offer an M as holder. <laughs> oh, that there. Mm -mm. See, it's more—it's mm -mm. proletarian. You can—you don't—you don't need to buy anything to hang it off of something because it has that little notch in the uh, uh, hanging notch. It's ready to hang. Yeah, it's whereas, ready to hang. For us, you know, it's—it's it's a coin. The, the air tag. It's you know, it's you have to put it into something that costs money. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, they didn't want to perforate it. They didn't want any additional holes. The tile's slightly squarish, so it could have that little yeah. loop as a result. But the, uh, it's it's a great it's a great thing because it will elevate the privacy and security oh, it's I think, huge. of all competing products. And having a it's billion a, yeah. phones out there means you just really that's the that's coverage huge. is everywhere. Yeah. Well, Oprah has a billion phones, and the rest of us have a billion phones. So it feels like it's really oh, two billion, billion phones. phones in my pocket, y'all. <laughs> uh, bad news, uh, according to the Verge, Apple's Magic Keyboard that I spent three hundred fifty dollars for on the last <laughs> iPad Pro, twelve point nine inch will not fit on the new iPad Pro 12.9 inch, which means I'm going to have to buy another, to add insult to injury, $349 keyboard. Yeah. Let's see, it's a $2399 plus $349. <laughs> now, now we're up to uh, about uh, $2748. Almost the cost of an original Mac. Add text. <laughs> yeah, I mean, add text. Those displays are not cheap. Oh. Yeah. Uh, has, has anybody tried the the uh, Combi um, from Logitech? I'm wondering if I should get the that keyboard. Yeah, the Combi Touch keyboard. It's going to be out for the new. Uh, Lori did. Uh, yeah, Lori loved it. Remember? It's going. They yeah. say they're going to have it out for the new uh, iPad Pro. It's more like a case. It's got a kickstand. Uh, somebody it's like is, a Surface. Yeah, it, well, more than a Surface because this whole thing is a case. So yeah. somebody said it gets it gets pretty thick and heavy, but it, boy, it's it's a lot less expensive. Yeah, yeah, it has Alcantara like the uh, Surface. Look at that! Oh, it's not Cheetos friendly, but it feels nice. Maybe I will do that instead. Just to now, I want to get the. You know you're gonna get both, Leo. I mean, we've been watching the show. <laughs> oh, together stop for it! <laughs> no, you know what? I'm not thrilled about the. Um... I'm not thrilled about the Magic uh, Keyboard, only because the keys, maybe because I eat over my iPad more than I do other things, but the keys get stuck a lot. Like my space bar works only half the time and stuff like that. 
Really? Yeah. I think I've just screwed it. It's that's me. I mean, I'm sure I've yeah. just screwed it up. Maybe I can clean it out. Yeah. It's not a butterfly, right? It's the it's the newer keyboard, so it should be easily. It's cleaned. magic. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. I, I was t I was having a conversation with Jason Snell about these things uh, last night or the night before over over Twitter, and he was making the point that uh, it, it is super expensive, obviously, but none of the none of the keyboards that he's tried so far, none of the integrated keyboard trackpads he's tried so far that work with the iPad are nearly as responsive. That Apple seems to have some sort of a secret sauce going that makes the the Magic Keyboard trackpad much much better than anything else out there. So, I mean, for three hundred fifty dollars, it should be perfect. But yeah. That, that is an advantage. So uh, Logitech has never offered it for the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, but they are going to for the new one. Uh, and it will be significantly less expensive. Uh, 190, 200, let's just eliminate the penny. $200 uh, for the 11-inch and $230 for the 12-inch. So that's a that's a that's a hundred thirty dollars savings. Apple charges a hundred bucks for Magic. I mean, yeah, that's Magic. What that tells yeah. Us. Magic's one hundred thirty dollars more expensive. Yeah. So I will be the guinea pig. Uh, it might be a little thick. That's okay. I, I did have a Logitech uh, case for my, an older iPad, and it was it was thick. It was heavy. I'm getting the new Magic Keyboard. I like them a lot. It's one of my you? favorite. You really I, like I, it. Andy and I have the exact opposite taste in keyboards, which is why I love doing the show <laughs> with them so much. Like the click, I I can't use clickety clackety keyboards, uh, and my joints are so messed up from jujitsu that anything that requires a lot of effort <laughs> is just hard for me to type on. So like, if gravity can do all the work for me, and there's like minimal movement, I'm super happy. <laughs> so. Uh, like I like the new MacBook keyboards. I think they're really great. But that Magic Keyboard on the iPad, for some reason, it just I could type on that thing forever. Yeah. My, my my pick of the week this week has to do with that, so I won't I won't spoil it. Okay. But yeah, my my uh, but uh, Renee's absolutely right. My attitude is that if you're going to uh, uh, if I'm going to if I'm going to deal with a keyboard that's not terribly comfortable for me to use, I may as well save all of the weight and all the thickness and just use the on-screen keyboard. Whereas if I'm in a position where I think I'm going to be using a keyboard, I would actually even rather have an external keyboard uh, that can be like even ten times better than anything would, that would integrate with a lid. I like this because it, uh, in fact, if you could show this, the kickstand means you could watch it with a kickstand uh, with a keyboard attached because the keyboard just attaches to the bottom of this. But you can also uh, use the kickstand and the, and the keyboard, um, you know, they're going to flip it around here in a second. There it is. Yeah. Um, I think that that's actually a good form factor. I kind of like that idea that yeah. the keyboard attaches. So I don't that, know. That's, that's that's one of the brilliant things about these tablets, and one of the, one of the many reasons why I wish that Apple had gone had not bet on that wrong horse, in my opinion, and gone with uh, uh, multi-touch on Macs. Because once you have a once you have a detachable screen, you can like uh, with the with the uh, iPad Pro, you can have it as a flat tablet that is the slimmest damn thing you ever want when you when you're just like watching movies or or uh, or reading comics. Or you can plug it into something that makes it into something more of a laptop that will actually sit on your lap. Or you can make you can make it into like a, a detached sort of system uh, that's more of a desktop sort of thing. So when I'm on my when I'm at that snag that table on the commuter rail train, it's like I've got my screen, I've got my keyboard where I want it, I've got my mouse where I want it. I'm getting the entire desktop effect, and I can choose which of these modes that I want to use depending on what accessory I use with it. So that's a really attractive thing, and I'm, I just wish you could do that with a Mac. Well, I think well, that I, I guess the question for a second because there was this whole. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Renee. Go ahead, Renee. Okay, so um, there was this whole thing that there's this this huge misconception when it comes to Apple Silicon, and I I don't know why because Apple does go to great pains to explain it, but the minute the M1 came out, people were like, I can't wait for the iPad to get Apple Silicon, and we we're like, no, it's had Apple Silicon for ten years, <laughs> yeah, isn't that and funny? now the iPad that's has the hoops. M1, yeah, and people are like, I can't wait for the iPhone to get M1. I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's M1 is A14, it's an A14, <laughs> but it's given people this idea that the the iPad can now miraculously run Mac. Do OS software that just because it's the M1 yeah, right. and there's been a lot of people writing about Apple bringing either iPad OS to the Mac or, or Mac OS to the iPad and I'm still hoping that we get Apple OS or Swift OS which does exactly what Andy said it's a, a, like a endpoint neutral input method neutral it's on all your Apple stuff it, it knows what inputs are available if you want to touch you touch if you have a keyboard mouse pencil all these things it just feels like we're getting That's, everything from Swift ASI to Swift OS mm -hmm. at some point from Apple. That's so hard to do though, Renee, because, and this is why Microsoft had so much trouble with it in Windows 8, is the the touch targets for a mouse-based OS, Mac OS, are too tiny for an iPad-based OS. And so 
you have you, I guess you could have a switch flip and suddenly the menus go away or something but it's it's going to be it's very modal and I think that that's not going to work and this is the problem Microsoft has mm -hmm. they really had it with with 8 they've solved it a little bit with Windows 10 because but it goes into a tablet it. mode and the, but the but the small touch targets make Mac OS very difficult to use with touch well, I think but I think that but once you once you start to integrate both of both of the experiences together it doesn't have to be that you're using all of one or all of the other so um, i know that when i have a when i've been able to use a mouse and a keyboard and then just touching the things that i want to touch is useful yeah uh, not that i want to touch the whole the, everything all the time i don't want to sit there and you know try to use final cut with that but i would love to be able to click on certain things or move things around um, a lot of times for me this gets back into my the, my methodology of how i do build keynote documents is that i have to go to my ipad to draw it but then I have to come back to the OS to actually finish the keynote document because the iPad is too inefficient. It's it's too inefficient for me to just build a deck by itself on the Mac, in my opinion, and too inefficient to try to build the rest of the deck on the iPad. And I just want both of them to merge. If I could just draw on, on that and then use the tools the way they were designed, because the touch interface, to your point, is very hard to use for a, you know, uh, high definition placement and so on and so forth that you would need for a real dock. What, what I was thinking about the how to leverage uh, the M1 chip in both different machines is to come up with the like uh, the most uh, uh, back to my Mac 3000, where instead of having a system where uh, the traditional remote access where you're basically live streaming the screen from a computer you have at home, what if it would still require you have your Mac Mini or your MacBook or whatever uh, up and running back home, but because it, it has that shared, it could possibly use a shared code base because it's using the same exactly the same cpu what if it was all if all it was doing was sending ui events back to your original mac the uh, the uh the, the uh, Mac sends back. Here's what I want the UI to do, uh, and now the iPad just does it instead of uh, instead of reproducing uh, an image that's on the screen back home. It's actually drawing the interface as it goes. So it's not running the app natively uh, necessarily, but maybe hunks of that code could run on the M1. And I wouldn't I wouldn't mind so much that if I, if I if my mindset is in the mode of I just have this super 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 slim and portable uh, uh, Mac that can also do iPad things. I would, and if it would, if it would also help Apple to sell uh, sell me a new uh, a new uh, Mac back at home, I would actually be very interested in that because I, I one of the one of the things I was using the iPad for a lot was simply remote access back to my uh, Mac and my Windows machines. The Independent addressed this a little bit in their interview with uh, Jaws and uh, John Turnus. It's a good interview. Uh, unfortunately, it's behind a paywall, so I read the <laughs> read the nine to five Mac summary <laughs> of it, but. Both Jaws and Turnus address this by saying, well, I'll give you Jaws' quote. There's two conflicting stories people like to tell about the iPad and the Mac. On the, other, on the one hand, people say they're in, in conflict with each other, that somebody has to decide whether they want a Mac or they want an iPad. Or people say we're merging them into one, that there's this grand conspiracy we have to eliminate the two categories and make them one. And, and the reality is neither is true. We're really proud of the fact that we work really, really hard to create the best products in their respective categories. And, and turn us back to it said, yeah, each team is just saying, no, let's make the best iPad. Let's make the best Mac. And um, and that maybe that is the answer. Maybe that's the bottom line. That, that's Can that's what you get. about that, though? Yeah. Like, because one of Apple's greatest strengths is that they've never been precious about their products. They never mistook them for their business. They were never the iPod company. They were never right. even the Mac company. Right. Where like Microsoft famously would not let go of Windows until it was in bombers, not cold, dead, not dead hands, <laughs> and they rode that into the ground. But Apple, like they will skewer the iPod for the iPhone because they know that they'd rather do that than somebody else. And Phil Schiller has famously had he has this doctrine where he says that. It's the iPhone's job to push so hard against the iPad that we question the existence of the iPad, and then it's the iPad's job to to improve. So we question the exist the import like the relevance of the Mac, and then the Mac has to fight back by doing things none of those can do and force them to get better. And Apple is almost like gladiatorial combat. They they just want the iPhone and the iPad to fight, sorry, the iPad and the Mac to fight, and we can pick the one we want for now. And one day they'll see which one sort of is winning, and it'll get to a point where one subsumes the other, or yeah. they both go on, or some third thing replaces them, but they're they're not their children. These these are these yeah, are instantiations yeah, that's of a really what Apple wants to do. Yeah, they're completely willing to to let one beat the other. There's no, 
Yeah, that's fight a, for mommy's love. Yeah. Fight for mommy's love. <laughs> we can't love you both. Yeah, <laughs> equally. And it goes back and forth. Like the iPad looked like it was killing, and then it went down. And the Mac was killing, and now they're sort of neck and neck. It's yeah. a race. Yeah. Uh, let's take a little break. Lots more to talk about. Renee Ritchie's back. Andy Anako's here. Uh, Alex Lindsay, and we're talking about Apple. And this uh, conversation can go on for a good long time. But I did want to, before we go much further, ask you, because I've got two credits in my Audible account left, and I, and they're running out, and I, well, I have a couple of weeks. I just want to get some recommendations. Audible, our sponsor, they've been our sponsor for so long. I've been a, actually an Audible member for even longer than they've been a sponsor. I, start, I got my Audible account in 2000, the year 2000, 21 years ago, uh, it saved me when I had those long commutes down to Tech TV every day. And it still saves me because now I'm not in the car commuting, but I still listen to Audible. Even <laughs> Okay. I, I play this game and I play it a lot called Valheim. And I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my life because it's like hours and hours. So I listen to audiobooks while I'm playing it. It takes it's taken the place of my commute, and it's great. I it's a wonderful way to listen to audiobooks while you're doing something else, washing dishes, walking the dog, uh, or you know playing a, a video game. And you're getting it read to you by somebody really, really talented. Um, there's a new book from Andy Weir, the creator of The Martian. He's got a great reader. And then sometimes the reader is the writer, especially, I love this with autobiographies. I'm listening to Barack Obama's The Promised Land, and he reads it, and there's just some, there's a, a first of all, he's a great orator, so he can he can read it beautifully, but there's also a, a reality to it, because you know, he's talking, you're hearing the guy talking about his, his experiences in the Oval Office. That's really, it's just great. Audible's the leading provider of spoken word entertainment, all in one place. Not just audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs to language lessons to business to motivation. There's original entertainment from top celebrity creators. There are thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts, all ad-free on Audible, too. They just offered something new, and it's really great. It's called Audible Plus. Audible Plus gives you full access to their popular Plus catalog. You, can, you get a chance to listen to I don't know how many th thousands and thousands of popular audiobooks, original entertainment, podcasts, ad-free versions of your favorite shows, exclusive series, uh, new formats like the Words Plus Music series. Andy, uh, a short while ago, you recommended the incredible uh, Neil Gaiman Sandman, which is basically a theatrical production of the Sandman with acted out. There's even actual plays on Audible. Uh, all available to download or stream in the Audible app, you can listen anytime, anywhere, on any device. You'll never lose your spot. Actually, you can listen to your browser, too, on your desktop. To use your Audible membership, you do want to get the Audible app for that Audible Plus. The Audible app is free. All right, Andy, what are you listening to? <laughs> um, I, I need I, recommendations. I, gonna, I know, I know. Uh, well, the, the, fir the first one, i got to re-recommend Devil in the White City. Oh, I love Larson, that. I've read it. Which love is, it. Yep. Devil in the White City is one of those just monumental stories that sucks you in. It's, just, it's the 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 lurid thing that gets you into it is, oh, well, the first prolific serial killer mm -hmm. who preyed upon mm -hmm. travelers coming to the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago by building this satanic hotel with trap doors and, and pits and things like that. And that is exciting. That does get you through it. But it tells the whole story of here is what the world was like in 1893. Here's what the country was like in 1893. Here is what the city of Chicago was like. It gets into these personal stories of just the story of Chicago really, really desperately wanting to host this exposition and beating out so many other cities that had international re renown uh, because they wanted to establish themselves as, no, we're not just a bunch of thugs uh, who slaughter cattle, who have this terrible, terrible city. We are actually a metropolis. We are building. We're on our way up. And then they get it. And now we're asked all of these political and sociological factions that were 
uh, working together to get this to to get this uh, this honor of hosting this event. Now they are fighting against each other because now each wants the each wants to, to uh, get the get the the get the event happening in their part of the city or using this piece of land that they want to be redeveloped. Meanwhile, you have the artists who are like, no, we have to really show off. We we are coming off of the most ex Paris the Paris Exposition, which the entire world is still talking about as something that will never be beaten. We are going to be compared to the Paris. Exposition exposition if we do terrible things because the because a real estate developer wants to use this landlocked piece of property that is terrible to work on has no architectural possibilities as possible to get to we'll be laughing stocks forever it's just this beautiful like environmental uh, environmental story about what this microcosm of, of interactions was like uh, in eight in the 1890s there's this little uh, sub story said, because in the paris exposition they built the eiffel tower and yes. chicago said well what do we do to beat that they invented and built the first Ferris wheel. And the story of that is great. I agree with you 100%. Anybody else? I mean, I don't want to make this a half-hour commercial, although it, it, it's easy to do. Was, when, <laughs> when they were weekly, that was like an extra 20 minutes easy. It was my favorite stuff. And I'm always looking for new recommendations. Anybody? Alex, Renee, you I'm, got something you want? I'm, I'm reading an embarrassing one. Um, it's, all, it's not embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It took this long. Devin Stone, you know, friend of mine, Legal Eagle, kept saying I had to read Primal Branding just because I had to I had to learn the words that would be the key to unlocking my true potential. I have not and read And so this. I said, I, okay. I need to read this yeah, clearly. It's, it's like super fan. Actually, it, it'd be good to read because it's like super fans. It's about your your thousand true fans. Yeah. And how you stand Create out. Create zealots Apple for and your Nike brand, and your companies. company, and your future. Wow. And I... I've been digging through the um, uh, shop class as Soulcraft, which is a really cool. Just the importance of being able to do things, you know, physically, and and why that, what, how that makes a difference, and and how we've kind of moved away from that. So as kind of a, as I think about that, because I, I think about craft a lot. <laughs> so as we do what I do with my, uh, office hours, and so, uh, but this it's looks it's a really great, good. Yeah. It's a great listen. Yeah, it's it's really really good, and I. I like to listen to it while I make SDI cables. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there crafting away my little my little ends and everything else, and listening to it, and it makes a hundred SDI cables go a lot faster. This, this sounds a little bit like Zen in the art of uh, motorcycle. Maintenance yeah, it is. A bit. Yeah, yeah. Just an, like a next generation of that. Yeah. Oh man, shop class is soul craft, yep. an inquiry oh. to the value of work by Matthew B. Crawford, and it's really Renee good. recommended uh, pr primal branding create zealots. For your brand, your company, and your future by Patrick Hanlon. And, uh, oh, and Leo, forgive me, but my mom says you need Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro, a futuristic look about artificial intelligence. Oh, the good thing about Audible, the thing they've done that's really great is they have their own studios. I think they have a bunch of them. And they record stuff that never got, you know, a lot of these audiobooks are made by the publisher. But they, st but there was a lot of older science fiction and stuff that that was never recorded, and they've gone back and there. And for instance, if you're getting ready for Foundation and you want to reread the Foundation, there's there's a really good brand new production of the Foundation. Uh, I want to say trilogy, but it's really like a, I don't know how many there are now, but uh, Isaac Asimov's a classic, the series. That's what we'll call it, the Foundation series. Scott Brick uh, narrates it, and it's really, really well done. He's the same guy who does The Devil in the White City, which is Andy's recommendation by Eric Larson. Uh, what are you waiting for? Delve into your next title. We just gave you four to pick from Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app. Get started with a free trial. A-U-D-I-B-L-E, audible.com slash MacBreak. Uh, this is new. You can also text MacBreak. Their short code is 500-500. Text MACBREAK, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, to 500-500 or go to audible.com slash MACBREAK. Get started with a free trial. Good to have you back, Audible. We missed you. Okay, okay, okay. What else has happened in the world uh, of Apple? Ransomware gang. I don't know if I even wanted to talk about this. We talked about it on Sunday. And uh, so... Our Evil, which is a ransomware gang, <laughs> hacked Quanta, which is a company that makes laptops for a lot of companies, including Apple. And apparently, they, Our Evil claims they've got all the schematics of new Apple MacBooks, and they will start releasing them to the world unless Apple or Quanta pays $50 million. And they released two uh, schematics already. 
the question I asked on Sunday is, if I talk about this, am I kind of, if I show the schematics, am I encouraging the theft of Apple's intellectual property? I don't want to do that. But at the same time, don't uh, you want to know? Only Apple paying the ransom would encourage the theft of, inter yeah. of Apple's intellectual property. Yeah, yeah. So I won't, I won't, I will be nice and not show you <laughs> or say anything about what we've learned, except that I can't wait till June 7th. <laughs> I don't think Apple <laughs> mind me saying that, right? <laughs> you can cover I, I, that I, I, it happened, but covering what it happens and who did it gives them unnecessary. Exactly. exactly. Can I, can I, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say that for, for the only, the only hints that we need to give is that uh, if the, if what they posted is actually truly what Apple's coming up with, the idea of my, I want to come, I do want to come up with a, a design a sticker that basically says Andy was right and make it size so that people can put it <laughs> like right on the brand new <laughs> whatever it is. This is it this is because this the is rumors, the like yeah. <laughs> so the latest on this, and I don't know if Apple paid or Quanta paid or what. But the uh, no, the hackers are no longer going to release it, or maybe they just or they mm. sent the Hitokiri Batusai yeah, after. Yeah, them. maybe they just got a <laughs> phone call from Liam Neeson. I don't know, but something happened, and they remove and they've removed mysteriously removed. Oh, it was Alex. Schematics. Alex called because Alex has a very specific. Yes, I have a, <laughs> a, a very specific like, set of skills. Let me let me show you the back end. Let me let me show you what Zoom can really do. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea this was possible. Yeah, like Time Magazine hundred most influential companies in the world. Of course, Apple's yeah. got to be on that list. Uh, doubling down on defining products. Got a little alliteration in there as well. <laughs> um, I you know you don't even really need to say anything. Of course, Apple's on that I list. Could have said dongles. With, doubling down on defining doubling dongles. Doubling down on defining matter. dongles. That would be. Then you get the four Ds. Uh, Apple has been told by a judge, you know, when you use the word buy on the iTunes store, it kind <laughs> of implies that uh, somebody owns something. And maybe they don't. It's, I, I will say that this is so a really... Here. I, I, I will say, though, that I, I, I usually defend Apple on this one, but this is a really uh, bad policy yep. that Apple has. That if you, so if I've had it where I've changed my, you know, I've changed my, my uh, ATM card or whatever that was connected to my Apple account. And suddenly I can't watch anything. Things that I quote unquote purchased, you know, until I put the new credit card in or whatever to, to update that, it literally just shuts me off from everything. And, and it, 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 it definitely smacks of, whoa, I didn't really own that. You know, it's not like something that I actually own because if I actually owned it, I could keep on using it because I had paid for it. Uh, and and I think that Apple has really missed the mark on this one. Yeah, the the the, the case what? involves someone who got their Apple ID terminated and lost access to twenty five. He says ten, twenty five thousand dollars worth of content that he purchased, and that's kind of BS. Yeah, it was such a, one of the things that offends me, and I hate to be offended by this stuff because it's the worst thing. Is that it was just bad lawyering. It's like epics level bad lawyering, and I, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't really say this. But I would have just gone in and said, "Hey, it's a relic. People used to buy the stuff and download it, and now everybody streams, and we never changed the button, and they, nobody changes the button. Everyone still has that button, you know." Just you made an interesting point on Sunday, though. You you still could download it, right? Or yeah, is that you can not download the them. You can. No, you still can. You can download them. But I mean, people don't because streaming is so convenient. But you, you not, used to not be able to stream. You'd have to download everything, put it on your backup computer, burn them, uh, you know, contrary to the wishes of the of, of the internet, of the studios, and, all those things. And even if you download it, it is uh, uh, got, does have DRM on it, copy protection on yes. it. And if the Apple, if for some reason Apple decided not to authenticate it, uh, as in this guy's case, you wouldn't be able to play it without stripping the yeah. DRM out, which is... That's why some of us buy traditional media and right. <laughs> strip it ourselves. Right. So yeah. is the word buy... To, but I mean, you know, this is... this is It's not just Apple that does this. Uh, most software you, you buy, but you don't own. Uh, even if you're buying e-books, you don't... I mean, th that you're buying a book on... I, I think like the, the hard part really is this... Discussion, right? Yeah. <laughs> This whole like like I totally get it. Like if if your if your credit card isn't working and it says oh you can't get anything new, you can't buy anything new that you didn't buy before, then that would that would be fine. But when you can't use the things that you theoretically that they said buy right until you update it, that that's all kinds of bad.
in my opinion. Well, the like, judge that's agreed. Not, that's, the judge agreed. The, yeah. the yeah. Apple uh, made a motion to dismiss, and the judge said, you know, U.S. District Court Judge Mendez, Mendez said, I, you know, Apple contends, this is in his uh, uh, judgment, contends that no reasonable consumer would believe that purchased content would remain on the iTunes platform indefinitely. But in common usage, the term buy means to acquire possession over something, it seems. And what would you replace it with? Like, what word would we use? What's a, what's a good word for this? Rent. Do we have to make up one? Add to li lease. Add to library. Add lease. to library. Well, it's not rent, because yeah, rent, add to library. rent sounds like it's going to go away there if you is stop a rent. paying. Where this you and they already have once. a rent. You can you can rent a yeah, movie to add, watch it. I, yeah. I like add to library. Then, add that, to library. You know, something like that, but it, it's that you pay for it to add to library. Like, I don't know, but it but buy is not true. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not true. I don't think we have the verbiage to understand all the different, like on Apple Music, you subscribe and you get everything and then you can add things to your library that you want to have easily accessible. And there's a download. Yeah. Like there's so many states of content and streaming is different because you can buy something, you can pay a monthly fee to Netflix, but Netflix doesn't I get, have what TV Plus has. It's I, I think that Apple could, I think Apple could easily fix most of this if they just said, no matter where your what state your your account's in, you can always download the ones that you that you purchased. You can at least watch them. Like right now, they they just cut you off from everything. I mean, that's that's the issue. Yeah, and you can rent something for let's say seven bucks, or four. Right. Well, actually, it's more like five bucks, and you can buy it for ten bucks. But is there really any functional difference between renting it for? The, well, there is. I never rent, rent anything. Rent yeah. yeah, you might as well just buy idea. it. The difference in prices. Yeah, because you rent it, you rent it, and and I never get to it in time. Like it, yeah. it's always, it's yeah. always, like I get, I, I I always get it. I start it too soon, or I, and, and also you don't get any of the extras, which I do want. We should mention that Amazon's being sued for something similar because this is what this is the terminology everybody uses is buy, right? Um, yeah, I'm I don't I'm torn because yeah, add to library is probably the better verbiage. It just doesn't fit on a button. <laughs> Fifteen bucks add it to could, library. It could be add. It could be ad, but, but it just buy is not buy is disingenuous. Yeah. That's the problem right. is, is that it, it and that's what's getting them in trouble. Yeah. So I don't know. We're going to go to rumors. I don't know about this one. According to Nikkei Asia, Apple has gone into mass production for a new Apple Silicon chip, the successor to the M1. TS they say TSMC made chipsets will replace Intel offerings and laptops. Set to launch in the second half. Uh, we don't know if it'll Such be called. A bad the, article. They, they, yeah, they use the word M2. We don't know if that's what it's going to be called. It could just. Easily... I mean, M2 it has to be coming. So th this is where people get confused again. So M1 is an A14 with extra bits for the Mac. It's functionally an A an A14X with like a Thunderbolt controller and some virtualization and uh, emulation accelerators. And so we have the M1. There should be an M1X, which would be an extended version of that with even more cores. But an M2 would just be the A15. And we know the A15, based on past history, is coming with the iPhone 12S in September. So they've got to be working on the M2 as well, because that's got to come out in October, November, unless Apple skips, because they didn't make an, M, an X version of every chip. They made like three of them didn't have X versions. The A7, there was no A7X, no A11X, no A13X, but all the other ones did. So it's theoretically possible Apple won't make one, but if they are, it's going to come in like October. So of course they're working on it. Uh, okay. There you go. The rumor confirmed by logic. It's like they're making a new iPhone. Remember yeah. every year, like Apple working on a new right. version of iOS, Apple right. working on a new iPhone. And, and, we're just and it's going to be the best ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it'll be twenty percent faster. A fifteen will be twenty percent yeah. faster. It is not necessarily the case yet, but the Financial Times says the EU will be charging Apple with anti-competitive behavior this week over the App Store, saying Apple's App Store breaks uh, European law. Uh, this we shall see. This is uh, this is the complaint that was brought by Spotify over the thirty percent commission. Um, and it goes well for them as they did for Slipnir. <laughs> they're going to win and they're going to lose market share. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. You know, uh, uh, that's just a rumor. We'll be watching the, the wire, as they say. Yeah. This is that this has been an aggressive campaign. This is this is yeah. th this this is how change happens, at least with Apple, because they don't they 
you you can't they're 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 they have blinders on certain situations where even if they're not doing anything wrong, they don't understand that they have to be. They people are not required to simply trust that they're not doing anything wrong, that they're and that this is all coming to a head at this point where uh, if the EU is if if they are insistent that they're not doing anything wrong with how they run the app store, that's fine. But now you're going to have to make that case in a court of law and you might lose. And so this is a good opportunity for you to revisit a lot of these decisions that you've been making about how you run the operation. And maybe there is some wiggle room that uh, uh, concessions that you can make so that you at least can make a show of how, look, we are so concerned about appearing that we're uh, the, even just the appearance that we're running things fair and square that we are willing to continue to make adjustments and concessions as they come by i mean un unless you think that they made all those changes to the app store because oh well we had that planned already we we've been listening to our developers and to the outrage from the community no it's because they were getting pressure from people that they can't control i mean i think that i'm curious as to whether you know like people say well they're not adding anything you know so they shouldn't get a percentage and like, well, if we let people install stuff on the on the phone, but they can't use any of the security features of the phone and they can't talk to any part of the like you like we'll let you do it, but but that's because that's what you're paying for. Like when you're paying for those percentages, you're paying for the ecosystem that makes it safe and makes it easy and makes it you know, uh, all those things. Um, you that that environment I think is being undervalued by a lot of the folks suing them. And I think that I, I bet you someone at Apple is thinking about, you know, when the fallback position is, okay, we'll give it to you and we'll give it to you in a way that doesn't take advantage of any of the, what we bring. And we'll see how many consumers actually want that. Mm. You but know, like, like you know, it's and, the other side. That's, my guess is it's the other side that's going to get them in trouble. That they, There are a lot of cases to be made why the App Store is worth a percentage cut, including the one Ben Thompson made recently, which I thought was really can you, which is that just having a credit card that's not expired, there's so much churn that involves credit cards expiring. And that's not the case on the app store. And that can be invaluable to a lot of developers. But it's that Apple has competing products on that store. And I think they'll get hammered for Apple Music and for you know, the things that make Spotify and those other particular developers so angry. It has very little to do. I mean, Epic is super upset about the fees that Apple charges, even though they charge fees on their store. But I think if 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 a lot of the, if the U.S. and the EU have their way, Apple will be the platform, but no longer the content filler of that platform. Yeah, mm. I, I'm. I'm also. I'm also very, very pleased that they'll. It's. It's well good for them to say, "Yes, and but we run a. Sa it's a safe environment that we have. That we would. We'd be giving up if we allowed this sort of thing to happen. And people can trust the apps that they get from the App Store. This is an opportunity for again people that Apple can't control to say, "Yeah, but what about that guy who lost a million dollars in Bitcoin because he downloaded a fraudulent app that had been approved by the App Store? What about this other situation here? It's uh, again every single company." Even the ones that I, I mostly trust, I am absolutely in favor of them being forced to defend the statements that they're making, that to certify the claims they're making about those products. And I think that in uh, by and large, when it comes to the App Store, Apple has not been made to prove that what they've been saying for years about the the App Store and its advantages are actually true. Well, I mean, I think I the thing is the fact point, that you can buy. I just buy, give them Gatekeeper. Yeah, I, I, I pay I thirty percent. Like. I, I pay 15% or 30% just to uh, just to not have to deal with password, you know, like trying to protect my software. I mean, that's why all the <laughs> software is so cheap. No, but that's why all the software is so cheap because instead of getting one paying customer for every hundred, you're getting one pain, you know, and, and not having to deal with all the things that are un unpalatable to the user, all that stuff goes away when you have, that ecosystem is extremely valuable, you know, and, and, and that's the thing that, that Apple does really well and Google does in, in play is make it easy for someone to buy something where the user doesn't have to deal with passwords and, and registration and all the other stupid things. Um, they just, but, but the, but the, everybody who buys it is paying the, the developer, you know, and that's a very, that didn't, you know, I remember selling software when that didn't exist and it was really painful. Clips has yeah, added the, uh, talk about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Renee. And I was going to say, like, some, you, you'll see a lot of uh, our, our friendly app developers will talk about their fears that piracy will go up if if Apple does side loading. But I think it, I don't think it would solve any real problems. I think it'd be one of those things where be careful what you wish for. But it would get so much off of Apple's back if you could just gatekeeper things on the iPhone. People think it will magically allow VPN apps in China, and it won't because they're blocking those at the server level, not the app level. But it it, it gives people what they think they want, and I think it takes all the right. a lot of the litigation off of Apple's back. Yep. I agree. New feature in Apple Clips, just uh, uh, updated. They talked about it in the event. You press the little star here, 
and something pops up that says AR spaces. Scan your surroundings to apply AR effects. This is kind of like the app that you were doing the other day, uh, last week, uh, Alex. So I'm going to scan. I'm going to continue to move your iPhone. It's not building. It's built. Oh, it is building a model. It looks very much like that, that model on that app of my yep. surroundings. And it's got dots and lines and voxels. Yeah, so it's just giving, it's basically creating collision surfaces. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be super accurate or pretty, right. but it does need to know where things start and end. So I'm done. I'm going to start effects. And now, oh, yeah, look at that. I can put, I can put confetti clips. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> uh, D brand, boy, they didn't take long. They are now offering skins that turn that white <laughs> bezel on the new Color Max IMAX uh, black for $50. <laughs> Fifth, that's that must Stickers be the Hermes cheap, wraps. Stickers ain't cheap. It's God, it's man. important to when you, a, des, a designer takes as much pride in how the, if the edges of the screen are painted than as the front and the back. That's a, it's a design principle. Alex, you you know you didn't you ha used to have a 30 percent gray room to work in? Or maybe you do now. Uh, most of my rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Interfeed. what do you like think of a white gray. bezel? I mean, isn't that a a bad I hate choice? The idea. Yeah. 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 I hate it. Yeah, so I no, not interested. Like not I'll interested. find some way to make it darker. Well, D brand yeah. is selling this matte. Well, it's black. not for pros. This isn't the pro version. No, this it is a yeah. consumer kids' bedroom version. Yeah, and it right. looks good in your kids' bedroom. The yep. pro one's going to be black. Should we, should we bet right now that the M1X version of the iMac has black bezels? So my iMac Pro or, or had, dark gray. had dark gray. It was looked pretty good yeah. actually. Yeah. It's very, it's very pretty with a black uh, Apple logo on it. So, <laughs> finally, uh, there was a. Just a still of Ted Lasso on the event <laughs> last week. Uh, and, and it said, you know, they talked about shortbread. Ted Lasso's secret shortbread makes about one box, and they cut it off because it's secret, right? Except, you know, it actually, you can kind of see it. David Smith uh, wrote in his blog, well, that looks like a one and a half cups, uh, 340 grams, cold unsalted butter. Uh, and he said, oh, wait. Let Did he make it? You Googled it, and look what you find. You find a New York Times recipe that has exactly one and a half cups, 340 grams cold unsalted butter, three sticks cut into half-inch pieces. Now, it's for a <laughs> bittersweet brownie shortbread. That's not what uh, Ted Lasso's given people, so you'd have to take out the... But he's giving them American shortbread in London. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, there is a regular shortbread. It's a double, it's like a layer cake. So one layer is just plain old shortbread. And all it is is butter. I want you to make it, Alex. Butter, a lot of it. Three sticks. <laughs> you, have a, you have homework, butter, <laughs> Three cups of flour. Th three quarters of a cup of sugar. And a one you and a half. sous vide it, Leo. So you can't sous vide shortbread. What are you, <laughs> nuts? You know he's going to. Sous vide shortbread. Sous vide be shortbread. It'd be, it bakes in seconds. Just be brown great. it. Isn't that cool? So uh, apparently, uh, the Ted Lasso's shortbread recipe really is a shortbread recipe from That's the funny. New York Times. That's awesome. That's an awesome way to uh, get people engaged. Is to give yeah. them just enough. They, they knew yeah, people would do that. It's like it's like when NASA put up the design on the on the, on the parachute. parachute. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. 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 Everybody, they deciphered that within hours. It was amazing. Yeah. All right, one more break, and then, folks, gentlemen and women. We, well, there's no women here, but if there were, we would be preparing our picks of the week coming up next. Our show today brought to you quite literally by Cashfly. Cashfly has been our CDN, content delivery network, for more than a decade. Actually, it was Matt Levine, at the founder of Cashfly, who called me early on in the Twit network and said, dude... <laughs> you got to stop using BitTorrent to, to deliver your podcasts. Come on, Cashfly. And it's been a great relationship ever since. We know Cashfly works. With all those points of presence all over the world, you know that your customers, your listeners are getting their podcasts or apps or downloads from a, a server close to them, which means it's a lot faster. So fast that they can now offer ultra-low latency streaming now, we're not talking WebRTC, the solution that's let us down in the past. Stream delays with Cashfly are less than one second. 
and there are more perks. You can play it anywhere. They have a HTML5 player you can use that offers easy support anywhere with an SDK available for even better mobile support. That means your player will run everywhere, websites, applications, mobile devices, any platform, they've got you covered. And of course, as I mentioned, Cashfly is a global CD and 50 points of presence, more than 50 points of presence delivered, uh, distributed all over the world. So your streams will come quickly to your viewers no matter where they live, no matter what continent they're on. It scales beautifully, too. You can deliver video to more than 1 million users concurrently. You can ingest thousands of synchronous streams. And, and that means any kind of stream, RTMP, RTMPS, SRT, whatever, and, and automatically converted with live failover. They transmux it into low, ultra-low latency SLDP or HLS streams. They can do it all at once. It's a, it's, they've really put some effort and, and time into this, and it's a very powerful solution. Plus, it's custom-built for your unique needs on top of their Cashfly's reliable robust global network with ingest and delivery anywhere you need it and the best support nice people there 24 hours a day seven days a week and i think it's every day of the year that would be 365 days a year 24 7 365 priority support they're always there when you need them cashfly's infrastructure can support more than a million concurrent streams today and Cashfly is the world's most reliable CDN with a 100% SLA, up to five times faster than other CDNs. They're also helping the world with a over the goal of serving 300,000 warm meals to folks in need with World Central Kitchen. Thank you, Cashfly. They pioneered the first AnyCast CDN infrastructure in 2002, and their best hub technology automatically finds the fastest route to and from customer origin across their global network of POPs for maximum performance and reliability. All I need to say is we use them and love them. Find out what Cashfly could do for you. Bring your bill, your current CDN bill, and your usage trends to twit.cashfly.com. See if you're overpaying as much as 20%. Twit.cashfly.com. Thank you, Cashfly. You're the streaming winner. Winner, winner. Cashfly. Alex Lindsay, pick of the week. So my pick, you know, while you know, I get frustrated with what Epic does uh, in the business sense of things, uh, one of the coolest pieces of software I've seen in I don't know when is the new MetaHuman, which you can download for free uh, from, you know, this is from Unreal. Um, you can create new characters that are fully rigged, fully textured uh, out of here for Unreal. It's free. Um, and the details are incredible. In addition to that, it is just plain fun <laughs> yeah to, to uh if you if you look at this here let me uh these the quality of this is uh, really good these look very yeah. human no uncanny valley well there's a if you look right there but if you look at this like here's so here here's the here is um you know some some people that i can kind of blend towards so if i grab onto his nose you can see how i can kind oh, of look at that now, did this them. start with a real person or is this completely synthetic? I think it was, I don't know the, the whole story, but it was basically a, um, I, what's been done in the past with these kinds of things have been a composite of lots and lots and like thousands of scans, right, right? you know, and, but you can also get into things where I just want to move some stuff around. So, I, you know, rather than blending it between people, I can, you know, kind of, uh, you know, play with the way these things look. Oh, and man, I, police I, departments I could around. use this to uh, create... Yeah. Uh, yeah, did it look like this? Sketches. Did it look like this? Yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, well, yeah. yeah, you could probably... Um, wow. And uh, you can pull you know, pull the ears back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, definitely for police sketches. I, I haven't thought about that. He's and got then you have, like, individual... Hair. I think you, <laughs> you can put Well, and then, and then with all of this, you have, you know, oh, the skin, um, you know, we can, you know, we can play with, uh, you know, color... And a lot of it is again within the range that that makes the sen makes sense for this. You know, eyes, um, teeth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can give him a little. Uh, maybe he needs a little makeup there. Um, wow, look at that. You know, so but but all of this stuff is stuff that can be. Uh, you know, if we and then give him a beard. There we go. And now, now and, see what he would look like as Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and, and so. And then, of course, you can go to, you know, what what is his body, you know, body type. So, you right. know, if we feel like he should be a little uh, heavier, you know, that's that's all there. And and what's really powerful about that, in addition to the fact that it's, um, 
you know, he'll give him a little bit of a swing. <laughs> so anyway. That's exactly the man who stole my purse, officer. Exactly, exactly. So the big thing is, is that once you get this uh, built out, you can export it out to, you can save it to your account and then open it up in Unreal. And so, and all of the, all of the, the, the. Um, so it could be animated. Uh, it's not just a 3D model. It's exactly. In real time. Wow. In, in In Unreal. And, and the, the hardest part is doing all of the blending, all the blend shapes that are required to make this all work are all built for you instead of you having to build them outright. And so it is, uh, now, in addition to it, even if you never use Unreal, it's just a lot of fun, especially in uh, conference calls that uh, you're not talking in. Like you're mostly just listening. You sit there. And it's I like, now it's know what Alex has been doing for the last two hours. Okay. Next okay. level, next level of, of, of doodling is just playing with 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 uh, with, with with MetaHuman. Uh, it is. It's it's really really. Um, what software is this? Is it its own standalone? It's in the cloud. Oh, it's, it's in, in the, the cloud. cloud. So when you open it, I think it takes about a minute to turn up. And usually when I see a minute to turn something on, it usually means that it's spinning up an instance in AWS. Oh, interesting. So, so, uh, so my guess is that's how it works. It does limit you to an hour session at a time. And I, so I think that what it's doing is it's opening up an AWS instance and then streaming back what, what you're looking at. That's my guess because the amount of data that it's dealing with would crush a lot of computers. And it doesn't seem like any computer I jump on, uh, it, it works on all of them. So I don't right. think you're doing, your computer you're is doing, doing the rendering. I think you're yeah. just getting video. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it is so much fun and it's so incredible. Now, one thing they don't have that the most common thing that people ask is, could I take photos of somebody and match this person, yes. match the character? And the answer is no. And I don't think it's a technical limitation. No, I think they don't they've want decided fakes. No. Yeah, they don't want. They don't want to get into this fake world. Yeah, there there are adversarial networks that the people have set up that can do at least in at least in research papers been presented that do do exactly that same thing. Where oh, it, no, it, it, it take it takes the output of of a solution like this and has it run against a facial recognition app and tries to eventually it can iterate to don't don't come back to me until you've got at least a ninety eight percent facial yep. match and at that point it's good enough that well great so now instead of having like a head on uh, look at this person now I can actually rotate it and see what it looked like from other angles oh. and just and the and the the idea just just the idea just the idea of like even if we're not oh, talking yeah. about like criminals uh, criminal and police behavior we're talking about like there is uh, there is somebody who's uh, you have only one really good picture of like a, uh, of of your uncle water skiing and jumping the shark yep. but unfortunately there's this big splash over his face well, so you can just give you can him even, so you can basically yeah so you can you can even see there's photo, there's iPhone um, iPhone apps that will just make take your old photos or even any old photo and make it move around the the but this is what this is great for is generating now the what I'm going to probably use it for the most is using building like if you're building a demo for somebody and you want to say this is what it would look like if people were sitting around or people were doing it. now you can just throw them all together really fast and Adobe has another one called Maximo which is similar but this one because it drives straight into Unreal and literally you can in Unreal Engine you can take your iPhone with the, the front facing um, uh, ID, the face ID, and you can drive the face on one of these CG characters like that. Like it takes a couple minutes to, to connect those things. And now you're just sitting there talking to your phone and able to animate the face on the character. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. You so said, it's, you said Tom Cruise, let me show you. This is a, uh, this is a, um, guy named Miles Fisher. He's a Tom Cruise impersonator. It doesn't look that much like Tom Cruise. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but they uh, use this essentially uh, the same idea to there's Tom Cruise's face on the left to map his face onto the impersonator's face. And then it really does look like because he has yeah. all the all the Tom Cruise mannerisms down. And now with the actual face, it's indistinguishable from a real Tom Cruise. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think that yeah. that uh, that uh, what was that was that 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 hair, uh, genealogy website that had that take your take your ancestors face yeah, and yeah, yeah. animated thing ancestry.com or whatever they, they were yeah. they were actually they're actually licensing uh, technology from a company that specializes in exactly that sort of thing yeah. so because so what Oh, it, but I just want to, Meta, Meta Human doesn't do that. I know that we'll end up with this, like, a, there'll be a whole bunch no, of tweets out that no, say, Meta Human we're, doesn't, we're doesn't saying do that. It doesn't know how to do this that. This is yeah, exactly right. what Meta Human doesn't do. And people have right, asked right. it, and they say, no, it doesn't because they don't want yeah. to get in this. They, they don't want to get, they don't want they the Google could Glass. do it. Of course they could do it. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. it's available. If this guy from Belgium could do it, <laughs> I'm sure right. Unreal Engine could do it. <laughs> anyway, it's so much fun. Very it cool. is so much fun to Very build cool. build out characters. Uh, I would highly recommend. You you have to wait a couple days after you. 
it'll go up and request access and then it'll it'll give it to you i think i mean it's, i don't know anybody that hasn't gotten it in a couple of days but once you're in so much fun just nice. so much fun to play with it request access at unrealengine.com meta human creator andy anako your pick of the week uh, well, uh, I'm going to be <laughs> up. Uh, I, I, would, I don't want to pretend I'm going to be up late on Thursday night to buy pre-order. What time can we pre-order? What time can we pre-order? Midnight? What I is it? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's 5 a.m. Did they, are they doing I, that again? That's what it was for air tags. I had to get up at 5 a.m. I haven't. I actually, well, I actually haven't Andy checked. And I are. Yeah, so 5 a.m. my yep. time. All right, great. Got it. Yep. Well, okay, so I actually, actually I, 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 will have to, I will have to stay up like three hours late because I can't get up early that early <laughs> to make sure uh, so so Wait, yeah you're I've, saying I've, you go to bed at 3 a.m uh if i've got my work done on time yes uh <laughs> okay, I, I i just I'm, I'm just all i'm saying is that if there's something absolutely it's kind of like be my butt if i'm if i don't make this thing at like at eight it's like you know what if i have nothing to do in the afternoon after that i think i'd much rather just stay up like 23 24 hours sure. to make sure that that's the only way i can guarantee myself i will be awake I and alert alarm. and processing stuff and i woke up anyway about 4 30 and i just waited a half an hour and then ordered the air tags and went back to bed i guess that's what i, I am do. i i this friday right of, for everything right friday yep Forty oh, uh, percent of my my brain is dedicated to defeating any attempt to have a mechanical or electronic device wake me up. I've, <laughs> I've, I actually, I actually, I actually built, I actually built, I actually built an app. Wow. I, well, I, I uh, the the only thing that actually worked was I built an app uh, uh, that would. Uh, Generate a random number between uh, between one and like two hundred fifty six. Uh, square that number and then display display that square, and it wouldn't turn off until I typed in like the square root of that number from memory. And that worked for a while until my brain just figured out that I can probably just like keep pushing at this device. I can probably def ah, defeat the speaker. It's three. It's no. It's four. Yeah, exactly. No, it's five. Go to bed. Go to sleep. Go away. Yep. But but that's not my pick of the week. Uh, so I'm um, so because <laughs> I'm thinking that would about be good. <laughs> that, would, that that would be good. Mate. That would that that would help to start to amortize the expense of the <laughs> yes. thirteen to hundred to fifteen hundred dollars I'm spending on it. Um, but uh, so I'm getting so getting back to uh, I've, like we talked about with uh, with Renee earlier. I don't really like the folio cases so much as I like having a really nice external portable keyboard. And part of that is having some sort of like a really nice case for your Ooh. portable keyboard. That can turn into, oops, ah, that can turn into uh, an easel. This is what I used ah. to use uh, from my original iPad all the way up to uh, just before the iPad Pro that I have. This is the in cases origami, and it folds into nice. this nice little integrated that's a, stand. See, that's now, a better way to do it, and a lot cheaper. That, well, that's why because th that way, and this is the this is not the Magic Keyboard. This is like the older version that had like right. the old keys i might now, it's have possible, a few of those it's, lying it's, around <laughs> it, it's possible that i didn't take the batteries out Whoopsies. when i put this into stores three or four years ago Whoopsies. uh but so but i'm looking i'm actually looking at something brand new uh this is uh something similar to that by studio neat called the canopy cost just 40 bucks and it's a similar sort of idea it works with the new magic keyboard like the latest version of it where it is a very nice slim keyboard case that will keep that external keyboard uh protected inside your bag but it unfolds into an easel stand for oh. Nice. Uh, a phone or a tablet. Oh, uh, nice. And it looks like it's pretty much what I want. The the only thing I don't like about it is that whereas uh, with this old with this old version uh, from this, this other company, the keyboard just hel just is held in just by a couple of clips. You can easily remove it so that if I want to just, again, it has this as a separate keyboard, again, if that sort of desktop sort of experience, I can do that. With a canopy, I understand that it has self-adhesive strips that keeps uh. Uh, the Magic Keyboard stuck to it. I'm betting that you can just not take the act you cannot pull the pin on those strips and just use it to kind of loose flopping in there uh but either way it's a, it's well worth looking at if you're like me someone who doesn't really want if i'm gonna if i'm gonna go for the bulk of having some sort of a keyboard i want a good keyboard not a bad keyboard and for 40 bucks it's definitely uh, within the ballpark of hey I'll, I'll take a floater on it and see how it works um it, do, it does mean that i i realized i have not tried out the newest magic keyboard uh for like long-term testing so that's another thing i'm buying like if you Apple store on Thursday or something. Yeah, because it, it it's really it don't don't ask the question which iPad does it go to. It works with anything. It, it yeah. needs to fit the keyboard. That's what the case yeah. is for. 
But the, so. but the nice thing is that for, forty bucks is a lot uh, is a lot better cost to eat than three hundred and fifty dollars because because your magic keyboard uh, yeah. easel stand doesn't work anymore. I, I, I can I can afford forty bucks every three years. I yeah I don't I don't think I want to. How much is Apple's magic keyboard? It can't be that much. Three hundred and fifty dollars for the twelve point nine. No, no, not the case. IPad. The actual oh, the magic keyboard. Hundred hundred bucks. Yeah. See that's now that for one hundred forty bucks. I have a very good keyboard. It's not yeah. it's not tuned for the iPad, but. That might be the right way to go. No, no track. Also, no trackpad. Oh, and no but trackpad. Yeah. Again, I kind of, I kind of rather have it off the keyboard. Here. Right. Good pick. Canopy Studio Neat Studio Neat dot com forty dollars. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So, because iOS fourteen point five just went live, and some of the stuff is complicated, I found this video by Jacqueline Dallas, who's just this incredibly talented YouTuber. She does a nothing but tech channel, and she made a video explaining how the the anti tracking and and Facebook first party third party. She made an incredibly well done first person narrated animated, just gorgeous video that I think anybody anybody you could give it to. You, Anyone in your family, no matter how tech savvy or unsavvy they are, and they will immediately get not only how the function works, but why it's important. And I think it's really critical to communicate these sorts of things, especially when new and maybe scary technology and Facebook FUD is floating off in the distance. <laughs> it's the Nothing But Tech channel on YouTube. Um, I've yeah, never seen outrageously her stuff. talented. I'm going to have to check it out. It looks really well produced. Yeah, she has a lot of Android reviews, too, so she's yeah. equal opportunity tech nice. YouTuber. Nothing but tech. I love it. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Alex. That's it for MacBreak Weekly this week. You'll find Renee Ritchie at YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Spread the love. Go over there. Visit that. Then the Apple Talks he does with Georgia Dow. He's actually... What you're really doing well, and I, you know... I know you like this nothing but tech, but I have to say you explain this stuff better than anybody, and uh, it's a really great channel. Thank you. Renee's doing new videos. It feels like every day, practically. Uh, there's one now on uh, the purple iPhone, the AirTag questions with actually with an Apple executive. He did an interview. That's pretty cool. Um, the purple iPhone video, I was, it was after I got my shot. I slept for 22 hours. I was so tired. This is the, if you ever want to see what actual Renee is like, and Leo can attest to this because we've had lunch. It's, it's, <laughs> I talk about Canadian coins, Star Wars. It's the closest you'll ever get to having an actual conversation with me. Cause I just, I was so based. I couldn't do anything, but just, just talk to the camera. Just for you. I will create a Canadian coins uh, group in our discord channel for the club. <laughs> yeah. and, coins. and you can come in and talk loonies all you want. They're Looney, already, Toonie, or Moosey. Which one of those yeah, is a lie? Yeah, there's already a comics channel, so you, I don't have to create that, but I will create the I Looney know, I channel. I've got to go find Andy in there. And the we'll, we'll the channel. Looney <laughs> channel uh, for you. Thank you, Renee. Andy and Akko, when are you going to be on GBH? WGBH. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm getting. I'm on early this week because I'm getting my second COVID shot on Friday, and just in case I'm feeling like the, like the first pancake out of the pan, uh, I'm, I'm having. I'm going on on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Go to wgbhnews.org, either live or later, to listen. You're smart. Uh, Lisa got her second Pfizer yesterday, and she's a little uh, st struggling today. She's actually working, but she's she's working on uh, on about 18 Excedrin. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was it's funny. Are, did you do Moderna or Pfizer? Did you say uh, Pfizer? Pfizer, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm Moderna. I didn't have any effect because I'm an. I'm old an man. AstraZeneca kid. AstraZeneca all the way. Is that uh, you've had your first though, not your second yet? Yeah, but I have to wait till August for my second. Canada, we don't make our own vaccine, Leo. We're at the mercy of the I know. We'll see whatever we'll throw over the border at you. Yeah. yeah. It's because of the earlier harvest, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Same reason for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Everything's earlier in, in Canada. Uh, I am actually, uh, it'll be two weeks of, uh, tomorrow, so... I'm going to go out and, and cough nice. on people. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I promise. Leo? I'm still wearing a mask. I promise. <laughs> Everywhere I go. Alex Lindsay. Oh, man, this man works hard. Office hours uh, every day of the week. You can find out more at uh, youtube.com slash, uh, slash Alex Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. There's even a we, link if you want to join the Zoom there. Yes, yes. We had a great session on Saturday with David uh, Mallon from... Uh, 
uh, Malin, I'm sorry, from from Harvard, talking about you know wow. a CS50 and and um, I, a lot I, of the second I, hours. I love him. I you know I I've assigned CS50 to a number of uh, mentees, but I also have taken it. He is inspiring. He, he is. He was. He was great. I, you. You can't speed speed him up. Like he's, he talks is about he the as same fast way. As can. Yeah, because I. You know, he does uh, uh, college level computer science lectures for Harvard yeah. freshmen and MIT <laughs> freshmen, and he does those at uh, two hours talks without taking a breath. That's amazing. And I and it's like I don't know how he does it. He's really and he's, good. And he's been. He talked about how he. I mean, he started doing this with videotapes in in the late '90s, and so yes. it's been. They've been it's twenty years forever. of development. He's really yeah. been able to kind of play with that. And you know, we're doing our cooking thing is starting to get to be kind of fun. We're we're cooking uh, in the on Saturdays. It's it's really an experiment in production. So what mm -hmm. happens is. We actually have three shows. One show is you're watching the, you, you can watch YouTube. The second one is you can actually watch Cooks Cooking along with the show. That's so funny. And, and ask questions and everything else. And then the third one is you can listen to our comms and listen and like listen to the show get done. You know, wow. because we've got, you know, all these, uh, you know, pretty complicated comm system, which we went over today in our second hour. So we're, it's a, it's a great learning. If you want to see how a lot of this stuff gets done, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty slick thing. It's, it's 150 people watching the behind the scenes of how it all comes together. And then we discuss it for an hour and a half after the event, like what worked and what didn't work and that type of thing. It's a lot of fun. I'm so impressed with what you're doing. And of course we, uh, you know, you thank you for sending me an invite over to your discord so I could, I could see it in, you know, in person what's going on in here. And you, you really uh, gave me a lot of great ideas for how I might want to run our uh, Club Twit Discord. So thank you. I appreciate pretty, it. It's a pretty cool community. Yeah. And you got a lot of categories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it started with just a few. And then we just kept on going, okay, here's a category. Yeah. And here's a bunch of channels. And, and yeah. we, you know, it was one of those things that kind of built up over the first month or two. Yeah, that's kind of the way I wanted to do it. And basically, uh, after a couple of days of overwhelm, I said, well, we better make some channels. So we have uh, uh, in our Club Twit Discord, we have one for each show. In fact, we're, I'm right now in the MacBreak Weekly channel. And then uh, we also have some categories. And like I said, Looney's coming soon. We already have comics. So uh, we're, almost, we're almost there. If you want to join Club Twit, the, the primary benefit is an ad-free version of all of our shows, both audio and video. Uh, that's really what you're getting for $7 a month. But there's a little extra added benefit with the Discord, and it's really been a lot of fun. It's a chat system that does audio and video. Uh, I've been taking questions from the audience uh, during some of our shows. I don't think I'll have time today because I want to get over to uh, security now, but uh, we have a stage up, and uh, people can join us in the stage and ask questions and so forth. It's kind of like Clubhouse during our uh, podcast. I think we're going to do some shows. We did a Linux show on Saturday that got a great response. I think we'll probably do that again next Saturday with Jonathan Bennett from Floss Weekly. Lisa and I did an inside twit. So that's a, that's we didn't think of this as really why would people would join the club. We thought it would be through the ad free versions, but I have to say Club Twit is a lot of fun in our Discord. And then there is a special Twit Plus feed with uh, fun stuff. In fact, Alex, we made a Club Twit Plus feed of your popcorn discussion <laughs> and i wanted to thank you because you recommended the amish country mushroom it's pretty good isn't it okay i bought a six pound bag we're halfway through it already and i got a whirly <laughs> so pop good. but i got the cut you know you I, I couldn't find the lindy pop that you recommended i think they stopped making i don't think they make it anymore yeah so i got but 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 whirly pop responded by making a copper bottom thick aluminum oh good whirly pop and it's fantastic and i do your recipe in fact i i liked it so much I sent one to my mom, and I got her to <laughs> got one for my nephew. So the whole family now is making mushroom popcorn. It's, it's so the good. best popcorn I've ever had. It does not taste like mushrooms. It's just mushroom-sized kernels. They're incredible. And the texture is just perfect. It's perfect. And, and it just, yeah. It's, it's perfect. It's great. We went through a lot of popcorn to find that one. <laughs> well, if you want to, if, you, if you're in the club, go to, uh, go to the Twit Plus feed. There's a whole, <laughs> this is a whole I'll go in. I'll, I'll, I'll have to find it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we're just basically we're taking whatever you know. There's stuff that wouldn't it's from the cutting room floor, basically that wouldn't have made it in the right. podcast. But uh, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. Plus those additional little shows we do and things like that. Uh, if you want to find out more, twit.tv/clubtwit. Thank you to everybody who's joined. We have over 2,000 members now. It's been really a lot of fun in there. Thank you, everybody. And that's about it for Mac Break Weekly for this week. Thanks, Renee, Andy, Alex. Thanks to all of you for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly of a Tuesday morning around 11 a.m. Pacific for me, 2 p.m. in the afternoon for the East Coasters. And if, if you're somewhere else in the world, just 
do the calculation. It's 1100, no, I'm sorry, 1800 UTC. So you can figure out what time it is. If you want to watch us do it live, uh, the easiest thing to do is just go to twit.tv slash live. There's live audio and video there. If you're already in our Club Twit, of course, the stage is up and you can listen there. We don't have video in a, a Club Twit yet. Uh, you can also uh, download shows on demand from our website, twit.tv slash mbw. And when you get there, you'll also see a link to our YouTube channels. That we, we have a very active YouTube channel. All the shows are there. Uh, you can also subscribe in your favorite podcast player, including Overcast. We love you, Marco. Pocket Casts, iPods, or iTunes, or whatever Apple calls it these days. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, but do us a favor. If you do subscribe to us, leave us a review as well. Five-star review would not hurt. I'm just saying. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work, because break time is over. Bye-bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I want to tell you about my show, Hands-On Photography, here on Twit TV. Each and every week, Thursday, that is, I like to sit down and share with you the best tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer. And it's not always about Photoshop. It's not always about just having the biggest and baddest and bestest camera. It can be the simplest of things like Leave your eye open when you're looking through the viewfinder. All of these simple tips can really help step your photography game up. So subscribe to the show today. That's twit.tv slash hop. And I look forward to talking to you soon.